Howard David coming up at two. I thought they were already doing that. No, paying him the four million, not disrespecting his ass. That's why. And no, by the way, the one that disrespects his ass. What? And the rest of them too. Who? Probably because he was picking those dingleberries. That would you know, turn me or turn kind of turn That's, me the other direction. People are still having breakfast. <laughs> yeah, a little disgusting. Having breakfast when he was doing that too, as a matter of fact. No, I think he's. You know, he's. I thought they were already getting the four what? million. Come on, Kelly, spit it out. I thought he was already. I thought he was already getting the four million. Yeah, is what I was trying to say. Sure you did. I'm also not calling that guy that plays for the Eagles T.O. anymore. Why is that? I guess tired. Well, that's right. That's bad. The people in Toronto are not too happy about that. Yeah, well, about pe- people dissing T.O. People in Toronto aren't happy about anything we do in the south of the border. But that's another. That's another that's topic. True. They were really dissing you folks on Leafs TV over the weekend. They were ripping the uh, Alan Cohen an ass. Why? For his tremendous disrespect. Roberto Luongo is very unhappy, oh, by the please. way. You know what, Neil? Let, let me tell you. head owner you got. Let me owner, tell you. Owner. The yeah. guy's got, they still have his rights for two years. Why would they yeah. give him six, seven million dollars no, now? Their, his agent was on. He wants four million. He does not want four. They offered him three, seven, five average. He that that four agent. Million. Four million would do it. Let me tell you about that agent. He's no Norm Kent, okay? Four million would do it. He's nah. a frog. He's a frog. He was on. It's exactly my point. That agent yeah. has one client. He makes Denise Potman look like a uh, rocket scientist. That agent. That agent has yeah. one client. <laughs> then he's a pretty sharp oh, guy. Oh, there. That was almost as good as the day the guy called in about Mo, who did the operation on Moe's hairpiece. Who said that? I didn't catch that one. <laughs> yeah, you you let out a little schmirkle at the end. Uh, we got it on tape here. I don't recall. Yeah, I'll play it again. As the, yeah, pres- as the president said about the when you do the When you do the fill-in between two and four, that uh, you're just filling in. Not for anybody in particular. <laughs> you don't mention any name. Yeah, I do. I say on yeah, the Howard David program. Yeah, right. So that's what you're paying attention to. Don't you? You have, you're a high-priced veteran, right. rich talent, and you're paying right. attention if I say who I'm filling in for. Uh, I like that. Every little I don't that's miss good. a thing. That, that's how you get to the top. That's though. what I was going to say. That's why, details. That's don't why you are where you are, because you haven't missed those things. Don't I'm miss listening. <laughs> Uh-oh, did you hear that? Yeah. I see he's got a tough week this week. He's only working two days, and you know what I think about guys that only work two days a week in the summertime. Yeah, I don't want to know about that. They get paid more money than everybody, and they're yeah, smarter than everybody? Four million. Let's see. Uh, are you knocking your buddy Mo again? Come on, this is bad. Who did I knock? There's morale. We'd like to see you guys bond a little bit. Oh, you mean there's morale here? As a matter of fact, oh. we like. I, I was hoping they would ask you, but nobody had the cojones. But I'll ask you. We we're that? gonna like have you do because it would fit in with all those Boca Brian bits we played. Do yeah. a little doy 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 for us. No, I'm not going Come down on. that road. No. Come on, just one time, no. Gildy. No. Come on. Sorry. Do, 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 do. You could do it. Maybe by the end of the week. How about just one little doy? Nope. How about one little goy? Goy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can do something with that. Can you live with that? We can live with yeah, that. Yeah, you got Come some. On. You got some high price editing machines. You can. Uh, yeah. You know, you're good. You're good at figuring those things out. One doy at a time. Well, tell him to leave my man Alan Cohen alone, will you? What, what does that mean? Stop ripping the guy. I, mean, I like all the other moves he's made. Yeah, they've think, done a good uh, job. Huh? Yeah. He, the, well, not him. I mean, my Keenan's yeah, Keenan, done a yeah. hell of a job. Well, there's a lot of rumors that um, they're going to make a big trade with Ottawa. Really? And get because well, Ottawa can't play, pay uh, Redden and Zdeno Chara. You know they go on right. arbitration with Hosa and Bomister for some an inexplicable reason is asking for three million a year. Yeah. I mean, what's he ever done to get well, three million? They got million? plenty of money there. They still aren't anywhere near the cap. Right. Well, they're not going to be. They're only going to be about thirty million. Well, why is that? Well, they're going to they want to get good first. You and mean people don't pay for those bogus attendance numbers that they put in with the empty seats? That house is full every night. What are you talking about? <laughs> Why are you laughing? What's so funny? Yeah, it's full all right. Full, full of something. I can smell the aroma all the way up here. It's a full house. Yeah. So anyway, they're talking maybe Bo Mister and I don't know who else, maybe for Wade Redden or something like that, which would be a great trade. They I need to back. sandbagging me. Too much hockey talk here at the start. You're starting to pull a rimmer. You brought, you brought, no, r- well, rimmer. I just, I just brought it up because I saw it over the weekend. Now, hang on. It's a good tie-in with you. You got your big, uh, you will have a playoff team anyway. They're going to make the playoffs. See that? That's the good thing. The yeah. bad thing is with this new schedule, oh, yeah. my goodness, they're going to be playing that those division teams, being in the worst division in history of any sport, over and over, Atlanta and Washington. Atlanta's going to be good. Oh, and Carolina. Nothing could be finer than to blow up Carolina. I mean, yeah, Ra- uh, what, what kind of a franchise what do you mean? is that? Raleigh's really nice on a Wednesday night in January. Now, let's see. Who the hell went to Carolina? The Hurricanes? Oh, Ray Whitney went to Carolina. Your man. Ray. He's got I mean, a huge like pair, that. so what the hell? He's not going to be too happy about that. I think they got Ola <laughs> Tevardovsky, too. Of course, he's used to playing in front of the empty crowd, so he'll fit right in. We're in Columbus? No, in uh, Carolina. Hang on. Now, the last time I played, I talked to you, right, you told me, remember that day that Rimmer called you and the deal was done, and what I tell you? I told you, no, right. no, no, it's not going to be done. He was full of crap. At least he's consistent. Yeah, he's never right. 
Ba, 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 ba. Call me the other day. He, he wishes, the, not that it's sour grapes, he wishes the Panthers lose every game. He didn't really come out and say it, but I know it. And he still hates the East Pot fan like poison and wishes he would just get run right over by a Mack truck. Well, I hate to tell you, I don't think Potman's a big Rimmer fan either, okay? Really? To defend Denny, yeah. They hate each other like poison. Is Denny's a good guy. I don't understand what you, with you and Rimmer r- ripping Denny Potman. He's, He's a, a good... backstabber. Uh, anyway, uh, he's always been good to me in all he, the years. Him and, him and Chris Moron, man, what a pair they were. Pop, 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 pop. They had a little pipeline going. Get into something that people might care about, yeah, although I doubt it. Sure. Josh Cordes told me this morning that he actually tuned in the Dolphin broadcast for the first time the other day, this yeah. weekend. Mm-hmm. That's 17-3 to loss. And uh, he said it was indescribably bad. He said that uh, nobody actually does the play-by-play. It's Jimmy and Joe talking to each other, that nobody actually does any play-by-play. You know, I didn't hear Saturday. I heard a little bit of the first game. Oh. And, you know, I think um, it's a work in progress. <laughs> no, I think. Oh, well, oh get out of well, here. Well, Jimmy, Jimmy's never done play-by-play. Yeah, right. That sure qualifies him, although you should know something about that. But at least you did, at least you did some games you didn't yeah. to fill in. Well, I did, I did a lot of fill I did. Yeah. I, I did a lot of games in college that don't play. By play. Well, there you go. Lacrosse, football, and when did, basketball. When did Jimmy do uh, NFL play-by-play or any college play-by-play? Any? No, I don't think he did. None. No. Unqualified. Well, and uh, unacceptable. Why do you guys suck each other's butts? So I'm much? just saying. Understand. Maybe he'll get better. Uh, yeah. Uh huh. And maybe, maybe Christmas will come a week from Shavuos too, right? Maybe he'll get better. I maybe love Shavuos. He's going to start peeing all over the place. Now, Shavuos maybe is a good holiday. Don't what do you not do Shavuos? on Shavuos? <laughs> take off. <laughs> take off while you're pissed. <laughs> don't take the day off and pretend I'm. Like yeah, a good Jew for a day. Jew. Here we go. Oh, I don't disagree. I'm a bad Jew. What do you want? Well, you got the name for it. Yeah, they, they How can anybody more, be more Jewish than Stephen Goldstein? <laughs> Even Jaime Lipschitz is uh, not a Jew. Wait a category. second. Wait a second. Yeah. We got a guy working here, Neil. His name is Shy Levy. Yeah, that's true. Please. And his real name is Mordechai Levy. Is it really? Yeah. You got the... See, his not many people. Mordechai? Mordechai Levy. <laughs> I'm mortified to hear that. You're mortified wow. to hear about Mordechai. No wonder he changed it. He's a good guy, Shy. This is uh, going to kill the audience, all this hockey talk. Let's get Rimmer on for a hockey show. Oh. Not. We'll get it going in October when the Panthers start lighting it up. Yeah. Hum, they're they're going to be pretty good this year. I like the moves. I, you know you know me. I try to tell it like it is. Yeah. Well, they're good. You know what? They're veteran. The people here are pretty PO'd about them letting Neuendijk and uh, Roberts. Well, they had no so choice. They sign, so they could sign Ty Dummy and uh, Wade Belak and all these other goons here, man. Who yeah, the hell needs them? He paid well, what Keenan. See, Keenan made a good move because he gave yeah. him an amount of money that Toronto couldn't match. If he offered him 175 yeah, or maybe Martin, even two. Martin and Jelena and Chris Gratton. He got some uh, good players on that team. And you actually and have some guys. And with Stumple, you actually got three guys now. Mm-hmm. That, that's Stumple, man. Take some uh, face-offs. I think the Pope is going to like Joseph Stumple a lot. Love the Stumper. Yeah. That's what we're calling him now. All right, I'll let the you Stumper? go. Yeah, because my shift is over. So I'm In fact, maybe now. when Hank comes back we, next week, you could arrange an interview. We could have the Stumper on with a humper. How's that? <laughs> have a great day, Gully. <laughs> You're pretty creative. Adios. Not a All right. All right. You voted for him twice. You bought a CD, songs from the Clinton Music Room, and you even bought that crap about not having sex with that intern. Now you can buy the latest collection of Bill Clinton's favorite music. Now that's what I call Clinton Volume 2. 20 of Slick Willie's all-time favorites, remixed and remastered by the master debater himself. You'll get timeless classics like Me and Paula Jones, She Devil with a Blue Dress on, Pink Floyd's Have a Cigar, and a new version of the Doobie Brothers classic, Whitewater. And if you act now, you'll get a bonus CD. Now that's what I call Hillary Volume 1. With all the former first ladies' faves, like foreigners cold as ice. You're as cold as ice. Paula Abdul's cold hearted. And there's a special bonus Hillary's 2008 campaign theme song. Elton John's The Bitch is Back. Call now and get Now That's What I Call Clinton Volume 2. Plus, Now That's What I Call Hillary Volume 1. Both for just $19.95. Plus shipping and bottling. CD ship separately because they just can't stand each other. Call now while supplies and their marriage lasts. Well, Ed Geldy was in a lot better mood today than he was last Thursday. He was a little surly and squirrely last Thursday morning, as I recall. Notice how I remember all these little details? Yeah, you do. Uh, he's all right. He's okay, Gildy. He's going to do a good job in the Panther uh, broadcast, and the organization is uh, making some moves. They're going to make the playoffs this year, and nobody cares, but that's another story. Uh, Jerry in North Carolina faxes for the poll today, and I uh, haven't even gotten close to that. Haven't even gotten to your poll result from yesterday. Just one step at a time. Always talking about screwing. Screwing. That's uh, George's deal, man. Screwing. Uh, always. No, but anyway. That's not true. Sometimes moving talk about drugs. Moving Men, a best TV product that actually works. Plastic discs to put under heavy furniture to move around the room. Moving Men, says Jerry in North Carolina. Moving Men, okay, put that on that pool. We'll get to it. No hurry. So uh, Josh Cordes has a spy report on the Dolphin broadcast on the other station. 
Uh, what's and to say that wasn't already said? Uh, it was uh, abysmal from my <laughs> listening standpoint. <laughs> abysmal. Wow. Yeah. There was so there were technical Jimmy... problems. There were uh, there was no play by play. There was uh, I, I don't know. Uh, that's enough said right Just there. Two guys talking and usually at the same time, Jimmy yeah. and Joe. Jimmy Stepping and over Joe each and other. Jimmy. Uh, pretty sad, you know, but then again, uh, they, I, I think it's a match made in heaven, the Dolphins, as you've already seen in the preseason. In fact, any organization that's talking about signing Tim Couch because they're so desperate for a quarterback, that should tell you you're going to be spending a lot of time on the couch in a prone position if you're a Dolph fan. I'd give it up uh, for Lent is what I would do. And what's the stuff I'm hearing about Tom Brady's got a sore shoulder or a bad arm or something? Oh, geez. Maybe we can just postpone football this year. Got a bad, before we do the poll result, Bad piece of news. A very famous person. Well, he's not famous by name, but his invention was famous. Yep. He died at the age of 71. I bet you didn't talk about this yesterday. No, I didn't. I'll give the audience the same audio clue that I gave you. <laughs> Robert Moog. No, no, and speaking of hockey, no uh, relation to Andy Moog, the uh, hockey goalie. Or Moog, spelled Moog his name Moog. the same way. Robert Moog, whose self-named synthesizer turned electric currents into sound and opened the musical wave that, wave that became electronica, as died. He was 71. Moog died Sunday at his home in Asheville, North Carolina, according to his company's website. He suffered from an inoperable brain tumor detected in April. A childhood interest in the in the theremin, one of the first electronic musical instruments. You ever hear that? No. Theremin. Sounds like something you would take for a bad headache. Would lead Moog to create a career and business that tied the name Moog as tightly to the synthesizers as the names uh, the name Les Paul is to electric guitars. Remember Les Paul and Mary Ford? Yep. Via con Dios. Uh, despite traveling in circles that include jet-setting rockers, he always considered himself a technician. I'm an engineer. I see myself as a tool maker, and the musicians are my customers, he said in 2000. They use the tools. As a Ph.D. student in engineering physics at Cornell University, Moog rhymes with uh, Moog, rhymes with Vogue. Really? All these years I've been calling it the Moog synthesizer. It's Moog just like Andy Moog. How do you like that? Uh, rhymes with Vogue. You and everybody else I know, including me. Didn't you call it the Moog synthesizer? Moog, it's Moog, Moog, double O Moog. Anyway. In 64, developed his first voltage-controlled synthesizer modules with composer Herbert Deutsch. By the end of that year, R.A. Moog Company marketed the first commercial modular synthesizer, and all these jingles were coming out with... Uh... The instrument allowed musicians first in the studio, later on stage, to generate a range of sounds that could mimic nature or seem otherworldly by flipping a switch, twisting a dial, or sliding a knob. Other synthesizers already were on the market in 64, but Moog stood out, stood out for being small, light, and versatile. The arrival of the synthesizer came just as the Beatles and other musicians started seeking ways to fuse psychedelic drug experiences with their art. The Beatles used a Moog synthesizer on their 69 album, uh, Abbey Road. A Moog was used to create an eerie sound in the soundtrack to the 71 film, A Clockwork Orange. Ooh. Bet you didn't know that. Cueing it right up. Well, I figured all the synthesizer it? stuff was Moog. Moog. Keyboardist Walter Carlos demonstrated the range of Moog synthesizer by recording the hit album Switched on Bach in 68 using the only the new instrument instead of an orchestra. I had so, that record. Did you really? Yes, I did. Switched on Bach. Suddenly there was a whole group of people in the room. Now, what was the, um, oh, gee, what was that song I'm trying to think of? Not Incense and Peppermints. The, uh, oh, geez. The one where they were doing the phasing. Maybe that wasn't a Moog synthesizer. That was just phasing they were doing. Might have been. Oh, there you go. Sounds all mogey. Suddenly, there was a whole group of people in the world looking for a new sound to music, and it picked up very quickly. Deutsch, the Hofstra University Emeritus Music Professor, up developed a Moog prototype, said in 2000 interview with the Associated Press. The popularity of the synthesizer and the success of the company name for Moog took off in rock as extended keyboard solos in songs by Manfred Mann, Yes, yes, yes. and uh, Pink Floyd became part of the progressive sound of the 70s. The sound defined progressive music as we know it, said Keith Emerson, keyboardist for the rock band Emerson Lake and Palma. Along with rock synthesizers developed since Moog's breakthrough, helped inspire elements of 70s funk, hip hop, and techno. How do you like that? Excellent. So, uh, Robert Moog died, and it took his death for us to start pronouncing his name the right way. How do you like that? Die. In fact, maybe, uh, you know, the Mo Man, do, 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 since we're always calling him by a name that he resents. Do, 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 do. Maybe if he would die, we'd call him like, you know, what do you think? Let's the give it a shot. Moo Man. <laughs> or how about just the Dead Man? 
1014 at 560 WQM on a great Tuesday. We don't have any ball game today to shorten our load, yeah. but we have one on Thursday. Not quite as good of a job as you had yesterday with a 1230 pregame. Marlins are smoking, baby. Oh. They're smoking it. They're like right on the edge. Isn't that only one game out of the wild card right now, I think? That's right. And they're like closing in on the coma-inducing Braves who seem to lose almost every day. And I think it's going to be a good uh, run down to the wire. You know, let's let's get behind that team. In fact, let's build them an indoor, uh, that, that nice tone stadium. I would contribute 100 bucks to that. Let's build them the dome stadium because then they could do like the Cubs and start playing a lot of day games because the weather would have no impact. Uh, they're they're going to remember you said that. Huh? You'll contribute 100 bucks. I'll contribute 1000 bucks if, they, if it would help. <laughs> if they would start the games at noon every day. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll contribute 5000 What do you say? All right, give it to me. I'll give it to him next time I'm at the stadium. I'll bet you will. I'll bet you'll give it to him. 10-14 at 5 6. Now, what do you say your girlfriend has a, what, a magic bullet? Yeah, magic bullet. Blenda. No! Grab my junior, honey. We love money and bread kicks in. Larry Matley, it's his name. Get the creep of the very crack in his brain. I don't like seeing these she hands. I want her dead, cause I'd go to grave. Like most Republicans, you know that oh. Jesus reigns. Well, I'm a yellow belly coward. This simple is making me stand up in this thing, cause he succeeds at the grave. Well, I'm a lame bread, take him. I got a gun in a red pickup. He's got a gun and a red pickup. It's a much rougher. My mom and sister is my uncle. Been here since I changed my underwear. Two Bush supporters being red in there. All Republicans drop your overall. Rectum. And fill my tank with Texas Cruz. <laughs> All the right next all the time. 21 past 10 at 560 WQAM. Now let's take a look at that schedule. Today. We got the Mo Meister. Do, 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 do. Howard David at that too. Do, 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 do. Putting in a tough week again this week. He's on uh, for a couple hours today. Kimba Bookcamper filling in for the Mad Dog at 4. And then at 7 o'clock, Jesse Agler. I have no idea who that is. He's a good guy. He does updates and that show. Is he like a board op? No, he just does updates and uh, Marlins Extra. Oh, he does updates? Yeah. Well, where the hell did he come from? He's been here a little bit. Jesse Agler, who does updates, will have Marlins Extra at 7 o'clock, followed by Marlins on Deck, which is, uh, I don't know what the hell the difference is between Marlins Extra and Marlins on Deck, but I guess you'll have to tune in and find out. Marlins on Deck, the pregame show, and then the Marlins at the Milwaukee Brewers. Why, why is there any reason for that franchise to still be around? I guess because the commissioner owns it 8 o'clock tonight and then Eddie K after the ball game. Let's see. Here's a fact that says, from Art in, uh, what is that? Art LTL. I don't know. What does that mean? Lord Lauderdale. LTL is Lauderdale? Lord Lauderdale. I see. Anyway, Art somewhere uh, says a bit of information on uh, Moogs, the monkeys. You, and then he says, eh, I like the monkeys, okay? I like their music. Yeah. They were all ugly, but I still like some of their music. What, you didn't like some of their monkey stuff? I like the monkey stuff, some of it. Dave Dream Believer, oh, you sleepy queen. You fairy. The Monkees used one in a song called Daily Nightly. The Moog was played by Mickey Dolenz. He was the drummer, Mickey Dolenz, man. You're not fooling me. He and Peter Tork were the only musicians. And, of course, Davy Jones smelled real bad. And who was the other one? Who am I leaving out? Don't tell me. I won't tell you. Ichiku Park was the song I was trying to think of. Yeah, okay, that's nice. Enough Monkees. Uh, Ichiku Park by the Small Faces. Remember that? That wasn't Moog. That was uh, phasing. You give up yet? On what, the monkeys? Let's see now. I just started for crying out loud. Uh, Michael Naismith's the other one. He was a real musician. That's right. Well, so three of them were like me. I mean, Michael Naismith and Peter Tork were musicians. Mickey Dolenz was the drummer, so he wasn't really a right. musician. And then, of course, Davy Jones, he played the tambourine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how about Green Tambourine by the Lemon Pipers? Oh. Yeah! Now we're talking some real heavy duty music. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, thanks a lot, Art, for uh, that trivia. The monkeys were uh, playing with Andy Moog. 
So here's poll uh, from yesterday. Here's George's poll, 936 votes. Who's gotten – by the way, our poll today, our uh, goal on our poll is 200. Oh, we All got right. it. <laughs> okay, see ya. Let's go home. Well, no, I don't want to, like, uh, on the 23rd of August, this is really dog days now. I don't want you to feel real bad, but it's mostly sunny and like 72 here today for a high and no humidity. I just I just mentioned that in passing. 936 votes. Who? Never had her. Out of sight, out of mind. The Brazilian guy that got shot in London. His name was uh, something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's probably 286. Really 286 votes. That poor guy. And I had all kinds of articles on our prestigious website telling you that uh, they they screwed up bad, really bad, and they lied to cover their you know cover their ass. Anybody that watched CNN in that very, very lame so-called documentary or investigative piece last night, 8 o'clock, that was the worst waste of an hour. I could have, I could have spent better time picking navel lint out of my uh, navel, out of my uh, toe jam, out of my feet, anything, than watching that crap. And just as you'd expect from CNN or any other American uh, TV network, just watered down, milk toast, you know, and there's Colin Powell, and, of course, he got misled. It was, it was all the intelligence you give them this bad information, and George right. Tennant said this, and bada beep, bada boop. Not that they're a bunch of freaking liars. They intimated that, but they danced around. Just like Geldy there, tiptoed around the tulips because he doesn't want to knock his buddy Jimmy Syphilis. See, what did I tell you about that sports fraternity? They're all in bed together. You fair. That's right. All in bed together. And of course, when you're in bed with Jimmy Syphilis, you fair. that tells me a lot. I mean, Josh Cordes, he didn't hold back. He told you that it sucked and it was horrendous and grotesque. It was pathetic. Hey, but maybe they'll get better. Huh? <laughs> yeah, what a response. That's just like that idiot Jim Sarney writing that suck-up column about Rich Martz last Friday. I saw it, Sarney. You're not fooling anybody. And by the way, what was the results of that poll, huh? They take the polls and then they, like, pssst, they disappear when they, they don't come out the way they want. They vanish and they're too embarrassed. Because, uh, you know, all they, Jim Sarney and Barry Jackass, what they do, they don't write columns with opinions. What they do is they suck up to anybody who will talk to them. So if you're any if you're connected with the sports world, whether you're like the uh, bat boy or the uh, locker room towel guy or whatever, just talk to either one of those guys, and they'll write these glowing articles about how Rich Waltz is getting better, and he finally discovered what it means to be the voice of the team, and they were playing a game, and a runner was rounding third, and he yelled, "Go, Joe, go!" And then all of a sudden, that made him realize that first of all, no, and I, even the most biased Terry Carey, Bob Prince, would never say, "Run, Joe, run!" You like that, you know? I can just see that in a Pirates game, Bob Prince saying, run, Roberto, run. I mean, just an idiot, Sarni. You're a moron. I can't wait till the Humper gets back next week. I'm going to just uh, really get into it with him about his friends. See, this his name, uh, that awful guy that lives in Boca, boring guy. What the hell is his name that does the uh, NFL? Oh, that guy. The guy that did that horrible job on the Red Sox-Reds playoff that I'll never forget. Dick, uh, what is his name? Stockton. He's horrible. Uh-huh. And, but he plays golf with Mo, and he's a good buddies with Hank, and they're all like in bed together. You're not going to get any objective uh, report from these guys on it. They're all in the same uh, kettle of fish, and boy, you can smell it. Anyway, who got screwed the worst? The guy who got shot in London, 286. Al Gore, 225. He won. There's a new book out, by the way, about that, which uh, I'm going to have to find out the name of that. I already did, but I didn't write it down. About stolen elections. Okay. Pretty good stuff. I'll have to go out and get it. Bill Clinton, 97. Richard Jewell, 52. Dan Marino, 47. Now, why is that? Because he didn't, they didn't win a Super Bowl? Is that it? That's right. That's right. Get out People of here. People say that all the time. Get out know? of here, Danny. Handed the ball off like it was a loaf of bread. Pete Rose, 40. John Kerry, 37. Susan McDougal, 37. Poor Susan. Cindy Sheehan, 28. Or is it Sheehan? Saddam Hussein, 23. Valerie Plame. Remember the uh, song by uh, the Plame Game? Yeah. 21. The Ramseys, 14. Bruno Huffman, 12. See, I voted for him. Yeah. yeah. But who the hell remembers the Lindbergh baby Nobody. and all that stuff? I Mikh- Mikhail Gorbachev, 10. And that, he got screwed at birth with that purple stain on his forehead. Remember that song by Jimi Hendrix, Purple Stain? It's not a And Google. David Koresh, 7. That was George's poll yesterday. Ichiku Park by the Small Faces. Let's play some uh, Moog synthesizer today. In honor of uh, Andy Moog. 28 past 10 at 560 WQA. Tonight on Inside the Behind the True Hollywood Celebrity Music Biography Profile Story. You may not know who the Rembrandts are, but they wrote the theme song for the most popular sitcom on television. No, no, not according to Jim. Friends. I'll be there for you. Oh, man, come on. 
Do you realize how many times on how many TVs in how many markets our song gets played every f day? Rembrandt's co-founder, Phil Solon. How long would you say we've been talking now? Like 30 seconds? In that 30 seconds, I have just made enough to pay for three more whores. <laughs> Be right there, my little biological receptors. Yes, although the Rembrandts have no real talent, they make roughly $50,000 every seven minutes. In layman's terms, that's enough for 866,000 whores a year. And I'm not talking skanky whores either. These are the top of the line whores. There is nothing Phil and I like better than channel surfing. Rembrandt's other co-founder, Danny Wilde, describes how he and Phil Solom spend hours with the remote calculating their earnings. Dude, we're on TBS. There's a whore for the boys. <laughs> and the local WB affiliate. Another whore. <laughs> oh, yeah, my brother. Back-to-back -back episodes tonight. Whore. I smell another whore. <laughs> all right, all right. The Rembrandt. So they're spending all their money on whores. At least they're trying to be real rock stars. It's a big, juicy, shopping wet look at show business tonight. On inside the behind. 1034, 26 before 11 at 560 WJAM. Uh, MSNBC is doing a poll. Did Pat Robertson go too far by calling for the assassination of Venezuela's President Hugo Chavez? They've got uh, 19,000 responses on their poll, a little bit more than we got so far. 82% uh, say yes, 15% say no, and 3% say not sure. And, of course, the 15% who say no, obviously, are those born-again Christians who always choose life. Of you know course. What I'm it's the culture <laughs> of life, life baby. people. I'll get to that uh, Pat Robertson story momentarily. See, basically, this is their true colors really come out. Mm -hmm. Let's kill them! Ah, you know, that's what it really comes down to. At any rate, uh, the most important story of the day by far, a Belgian nun's acrobatic and indecorous dancing with a missionary during the Catholic World Youth Day in Germany in Cologne over the weekend. You know, that, that, I saw the pictures of that, and it just makes me want to cry, because Cologne is such a beautiful city, and the idea that it was infested by these brainwashed, these quizlings, these uh, simpleton punks, uh, and it's really sad. But it goes to show you, like I said last week, brainwashing really works, boys and girls. It works like a charm, mm -hmm. especially if you get to them when they're really young. Oh, yeah. Get to them young and brainwash them, and then molest them a little bit, too, and then, of course, they're like, uh, they're like uh, auto meetings. A Belgian nun's acrobatic and indecorous dancing with a missionary during the Catholic World Youth Day in Germany over the weekend earned her a reprimand from her mother superior, a Belgian paper said on Tuesday, meaning today. How do you like that? Huh. I wonder if Whitney is going to meet that um, same mother superior. Did they have a video? Oh, that's right. You don't watch Passions. I'm sorry. Daily had lots of news in Brussels showed pictures of a dancing Johan Vertomen being held up in the air by the missionary and then clinging to him with her legs wrapped around his body. This is starting to sound like that uh, video I showed you that time about Band Onanaman. Remember that? Where the nun was, yeah. was dancing naked with a nun? You remember <laughs> yeah, that? I do. Yeah. I wouldn't do this at home, but at such occasions I get carried away by the enthusiasm of the group, the 29-year-old told the paper later. My mother's superior raised the issue today. She thinks I should watch out of it and bear in mind that I represent our community, Vertoman said. Pope Benedict attended the uh, celebration at the Marienfeld outside Cologne in the presence of some 700,000 people. Oh, now it's down to seven. It was a million over the weekend, they were saying. Now it's down to 700,000. There were a lot. Way too many brainwashed, mesmerized. These people need to be deprogrammed immediately, not sooner. All religions, all cults, they're all the same. They're all malignant. Now, and here's a perfect example. What a nice segue. Thank you. Oh, I didn't do the poll yet, did I? No. Here's the uh, poll we got for today, and I was inspired... I was inspired to do this poll because I saw that faker. I got several. I'm going to rip him an ass today at a great length. Kevin Trudeau. <clears throat> he ain't no Pierre Elliott Trudeau, I'll tell you that. Kevin Trudeau. Remember I asked you a few months ago, I said, you know, there's this guy peddling this book. And, of course, you know, it's easy to go on and knock the FDA and the FTC. And, and yeah, I mean, that, that's easy to do because anybody with a brain agrees with that. But I was in Walgreens last time I was in South Florida. And right at the counter, there was the book. So I thought, well, it's 30 bucks. I can afford it. About 30, man. 30 bucks. And I'll j just pick it up and see uh, just how much quackery. Uh, quackery would be an understatement. But I was telling you that he used to be the interviewer on these cheesy infomercials, mm -hmm. peddling that coral calcium and all this other quackery. Now he's the guest. He's the expert. He's the author. And I'll tell uh -huh. you why a little later. He, I mean, you can hear the Aflac duck making those quacking sounds. Do not buy that book. Please don't buy anything that Kevin Trudeau is peddling to you. So I thought okay. about good stuff that's uh, been bought on TV, like my flavor wave. And to show you the power of Neil, how it's vanished, uh, this to me is like a personal slap in the face. 
Wow. Uh, I can't believe it. The Flavor Wave Deluxe Oven that I've raved about that I use every day that I bought one for George and one for Josh and one for just about everybody I know. And I love it. And it's got mm-hmm. one vote, and that was mine. Yeah. How is that possible? I don't know. What's the, they, and I thought, oh, all these people in the audience are going to be buying it. They're going to be loving it. Maybe they bought it and they hated it. I don't, we'll find out, I guess. What's the best product you ever bought from a TV infomercial? We got 245 votes. We got a shot of 300. Never bought anything. 176. Well, maybe you're smart because most of the stuff they peddle on there is crap. Most of it. Not all of it. Most. See, if, if it's good, they would sell it in stores. You can go in and you can get a feel of it and see it and, you know, know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh-huh. Never bought anything from Infomercial 176. The overwhelming, that's 70% of our astute audience. The mean, lean grilling machine, which George bought me one of those several years ago. George Foreman, who's got a whole new bunch of crap. He just signed the pedal. I don't know what it is yet. but Even leaner and meaner, I understand. Yeah, he's leaner and meaner. 35. We like George Foreman. Good old ball guy. Ronco Showtime Rotisserie 10. That's Ron Popeil's best product ever, and I, I believe that. You just said it, and... Just walk away. No, that's the uh, flavor <laughs> way. Set it and forget it. Come on. You just, you just uh, aren't watching your infomercials, mister. I don't have a drop mister. for that. Set it and forget it. The Ultra Food Vacuum Sealer 7. The Pocket Fisherman 7. You can see amazing things you can do with that. Ionic Breeze Air Purifier. I have one in the other room, four. I, I must be doing something because I have to keep cleaning it out, and it's got, like, schmutz on it, you know. You have to keep cleaning that thing. Jack Lane Juicer 3. Jack just turned 200, by the way. Happy birthday, Jack. Have you ever seen that thing? No. And at the end of the show where he sings the song. Uh, <laughs> what in song? fact, his wife is like holding him up during the entire show. like in the, And the uh, juice that he's drinking is like dribbling down his chin. It's, it's embarrassing. But it might be a good product. The Jack Lane Juicer 3. The Magic Bullet Blender 2 with that cheesy British guy. And the uh, very attractive blonde who allegedly is his wife, but I, I doubt it. The Ronco Food Dehydrator 2. Oh, yeah, that's good for drying out your weed, man. Uh, Moving Men 1. Ronco Vegematic uh, 1. AB, the Ab Slide 1. AB Cohen. The Ab Slide. The Flavor Wave Deluxe Oven's got one vote, and that's mine. Oh, what a slap that is, man. A personal <laughs> shot. No power on this show. I, I, you know something? I really don't care. George loves his. Josh uses his, and uh, we like it. Yeah. So if you don't want it, too bad. Walkfit, Thunderstick Pro Mixer, and the Ronco Pasta Maker so far have got the big... Oh. As a matter of fact, if anybody out there wants a couple of Ronco Pasta Makers, I think George and I could arrange that. You'll have to pick them up. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QM. The Lord even loves Neil Rogers. Pat Roberts in and Jerry Falwell have joined together... <laughs> To bring you the tasty food of God. Introducing Pat and Jerry's ice cream. Featuring a variety of flavors every fundamental taste will enjoy. Like Polly's Unbond. Tangy, yeast-flavored beige ice cream with blue cheese chunks. Lots of lots of juice. Herring-flavored ice cream with chunks of salmon. A flavor you're sure to hate. Just like those Christ killers. The body and blood of Christ. Vanilla ice cream with vanilla chips of the Holy Sacrament laced with red wine. Banana lips been made. Blood red ice cream with yellow banana flavored lips that will delight any fundamental case with the kiss of death. And everybody's favorite chocolate jungle monkey. Jesus says, It's great! Pat and Jerry's ice cream. The fundamental case treat with substance. Ah. 14 to 11 at 560 WQM, the Floby haircutting system. Oh, yeah. says, are they serious about that, or is that How a joke? How forget? What? The Floby haircutting system. Yeah. Well, I guess they're serious. Why not? They must have sold uh, some. And the singing bass, what the hell is that? Oh, the singing bass, you know, you put it on the wall, it sings. It does? Sure. No, seriously, what is it? It's a singing bass. It turns towards you. <laughs> it's a make presence. It like that? The singing bass. Okay, put it on I there. just sings Ocean okay. Santa. Here's a uh, singing bastard. I don't know if he sings or not. Conservative Christian broadcaster Pat Robertson has called for the U.S. to assassinate Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez. Oh, my God. Calling him a terrific danger bent on exporting communism and Islamic extremism across the Americas. This is, this is what fundamentalist Christianity is all about, boys and girls. Hate. Kill. Ah, get him. But don't forget, choose life. If he thinks we're trying to assassinate him, I think we really ought to go ahead and do it, Robertson told viewers on the 700 Club show yesterday. It's a whole lot cheaper than starting a war. 
And they've been showing that clip. How many times did I see it already this morning? About 30, man. Robertson, a contender for the Republican presidential nomination in 1988, called Chavez a dangerous enemy to our south, controlling a huge pool of oil that could hurt us badly. That's right. Let's grab that oil. Ah, that's what it says in the Bible, doesn't it? Yeah. It could hurt us. your enemies and grab fire. their oil. We have the ability to take them out, and I think the time has come that we exercise that ability, Robertson said. We don't need another $200 billion war to get rid of one strong-armed dictator. It's a whole lot easier to have some of the covert operatives do the job and then get it over with. Yeah. You mean like they could with Here is a guy who's on the air advocating murder. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, and speaking of that, how about that uh, Iraqi constitution? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't complain about the women's rights in Iraq because if they get their way, they're not going to be any. They aren't going to have any rights. But they will be able to get married at nine, at the age of nine. Did you hear that before the yeah, show? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. At any rate, uh, Robertson accused Chavez, a left-wing populist with close ties to Cuban President Fidel Castro, of trying to make Venezuela a launching pad for communist infiltration and Muslim extremism all over the continent. This is in our sphere of influence, so we can't let this happen, he said. Chavez has said he believes the U.S. is trying to assassinate him, vowing that Venezuela, which accounts for more than 10% of U.S. oil imports, would shut off the flow of oil if that happens. Robertson's comments yesterday were the latest in a string of controversial remarks in recent years by the religious crazed broadcaster and founder of the Christian Coalition. I, I, I got news for you. I got a better idea. Let's take Pat Robertson out. What do you say? Yeah. Huh? Out to lunch? For a walk on a leash. Last October, during the heat of the presidential race, Robertson told CNN that during a meeting with President Bush prior to the invasion of Iraq, the president told him he didn't believe there would be any casualties. The White House strongly denied the claim. There wouldn't be any. It's only like close to 1860-something. Well, God to 2000 now. In May, during an ABC interview, Robertson ignited a firestorm with his response to a question about whether activist judges were more of a threat to America than terrorists. If they look over the course of 100 years, I think the gradual erosion of the consensus that's held our country together is probably more serious than a few bearded terrorists who fly into buildings, he said. Defending his remarks in a letter to Sa Senator Frank Lautenberg, Robertson insisted he was not being cavalier about the 9-11 attacks, but he also refused to apologize, saying Supreme Court rulings on abortion, religious expression in the public square, pornography and same-sex marriage are all of themselves graver dangers in decades to come than the terrorists which our great nation has defeated in Afghanistan and Iraq. Mm. Oh, they're done. that's braver. right. Mission accomplished. I forgot. That's right. In October 2003, Robertson, criticizing the State Department during an interview on the 700 Club, said, maybe we need a very small nuke thrown off on Foggy Bottom to shake things up, referring to the nickname for the department's headquarters in Washington. State Department spokesman Richard Boucher called the remarks despicable. See, then we got that spick thing in there, despicable. I don't in I July 2003, Robertson asked his audience to pray for three justices to retire for the Supreme Court so they could be replaced with more conservative jurists. One justice is 83 years old, another has cancer, another got a heart condition, he said. Robertson insisted he was only calling for prayers for the justices to retire and was not asking, <laughs> asking his followers to pray for their demise. In November 2002, Robertson charged that the Muslim holy book, the Koran, incites followers to kill people of other faiths and disputed Bush's characterization of Islam as a religion of peace. Good thing the Bible doesn't. It's clear from the teachings of the Koran and also from the history of Islam that it's anything but peaceful, Robertson said in a subsequent interview with CNN. Of course, there are peace-loving Muslims, but at the same time, at the core of this religion is jihad, and it is subject to the, uh, the unbelievers either to force conversion or death. That's what it teaches. Thank God the Christians never did that, okay? Yeah. Subject uh, subjecting uh, people to forced conversion or bada-bing. Well, you know, way, way back when, they didn't have any guns, so they used more, they used more creative methods. Stoning. The Ronco 25-piece knife set. Okay. Okay. Have you seen that infomercial? No. Just uh, slice them and dice them and walk away or forget it. Just slice them and walk away. The Ronco 25-piece knife set. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's not 25, though. Uh, what, what is Whatever this man talking about? It's a lot more than that. It's How like, I think, I think 3,000. At any rate, the, the Ronco knife set. You have to put a number in there. Got it? Got it. How's that coming so far? I'm, I'm so depressed about that flavor wave, I, I could, like, uh, jump off a tall building. Don't do that. What's the best product you ever bought from a TV infomercial? We got uh, 292. Our goal is 295. Never bought anything. 205 of uh, 70%. 212 now. Oh, well, look at that. I bet you we got our uh, 302. They're pouring in in chunks. The Mean Lean Grilling Machine 42. That's a good, that's a good thing. The thing I like best about that is it cooks on both sides simultaneously, side by yeah. each. The Ronco Showtime Rotisserie 12, you just set it and just walk away. The Ultra Food Vacuum Sealer 8, 
The Pocket Fisherman 7. That sounds like kind of fishy yeah. and swishy to me. I don't know. Sounds fun. Anybody's got one of those in their pocket, I wouldn't trust them. Doing it now. Magic Bullet Blender 4. The Ionic Breeze Air Purifier 4. The Jack Lane Juicer 4. Hey, Jack, wake up, sweetheart. Always oh, taking a nap. The Moving Men 2. The Ronco Food Dehydrator's got a pair. The Floby Haircutter 1. The Ronco Vegematic 1. The Ab Slide 1. The Ronco Pasta Maker 1. And my Flavor Wave Deluxe Oven's only got my vote. Oh, my God. The Singing Bass. <laughs> the Singing Bass. Yeah. The Walk Fit. And the Thunderstick Pro Mixer so far have got the big. Oh. Yeah. I remember that uh, pasty bra, that old bitch that the uh, Thunderstick Pro Mixer uh, infomercial no wonder didn't sell any. She was uh, ridiculous looking. Yeah, some of the people. Have you noticed that it's like about the same half dozen people? And oh, back yeah. in the day when I bought my first big satellite dish about 100 years ago, uh, everything, I mean, there was just so much stuff on there then. That's before they scrambled anything. And there was just uh, tons and tons of interesting and the bizarre stuff. And they had all these uh, about, do uh, you think there's a lot of infomercials on now? There were like a trillion of them on back then on the dish. Hmm. And there was a guy who now supposedly is uh, is Ron Popeil's uncle. I think he calls him Uncle Sam or something. And uh, you know, I don't know how he's got a, a Jewish uncle. Uh, they don't come any more goyish than Ron Popeil, I don't think. But at any rate, uh, so now Uncle Sam is on there in the beginning of the uh, knife uh, set infomercial. You better start watching your infomercials, nah. Mr. Because, oh, yeah, kill some good time. Yeah, right after passion. Speaking of good time. A Broward County judge yesterday reconfirmed his order that the installation of slot machines should not be delayed while gaming venue owners wait for county and state officials to draft regulations to control voter-approved gambling. You know which judge this is? It's Judge do, 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 do. the Mo-Man. Voters in March, as well we know they approved it, in his ruling yesterday, Circuit Judge Leroy Moe do, 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 do. said the longer the delay in setting up the slots, the longer voters are being ignored. And it's got a picture in the Sun Sentinel article. I also have the Herald article here, too. Don't expect them soon, it says. Uh, and it's got a picture of uh, some people sitting at slot machines, and there's four of them here. And guess what slot machine game it is? Wheel of Fortune. A good guess. Wheel of Torture. That's it. Moe's order yesterday was a response to an argument made June 22nd by Broward State Attorney Michael Satz that slot machines could not be installed until regulations were drafted by the state legislature. The new order lifts the stay on Moe's first order that automatically took effect when Satz appealed. <coughs> Judge Moe said the voters had voted to have slot machines, and they were entitled to have their votes counted, said Tom Jewell, an attorney for the county's four paramutuals. The paramutuals are not rushing forward to put in slot machines before the regulations are drafted, but they won't wait forever. And the Herald story says, don't expect slots immediately. The owners of four paramutuals that want to install slot machines are working with state lawmakers and Broward County commissioners to draft regulatory guidelines. They also expect that the governor is going to convene a special session this fall, that's your fat-ass governor, to force the legislature to pass regulations. Circuit Judge Moe said he appreciated efforts to come to an agreement outside of the courtroom, but was concerned that a voter approved the constitutional amendment wasn't being enacted. That's why he agreed that the paramutuals could go forward with their plans, even as the lawsuit was pending. I thank and commend everyone who's working together to try to resolve the issue outside of the courtroom. Moe said, the fallout I have no control over. I may be in charge, but I'm not in control, whatever that means. A lawyer for the county's three horse tracks and one highlight fronton said that the four paramutuals would continue to work with legislator and Broward County commissioners. Uh, their lawyer, Tom Julin, said, I think December 1 is a good sort of outside date. There's only so long that you'll wait. State lawmakers fail to write. Uh, right, yeah, we know what they do. They're stonewalling. They're, you know, spinning their wheels like they always do. The bullet train, everything that you people want, the uh, class size, er everything. They just have uh, these peculiar ways. They have vase, and they just do whatever the hell they want. And the public says, oh, yeah, we like that fat-ass governor. They took a poll in one of the papers uh, this morning about uh, education. Is it better or worse under uh, Jeb Bush? And, like, overwhelming, I think it's in the Sun Sentinel, overwhelmingly uh, worse. Maybe that's yeah. one of the reasons that he's so popular, you know what? It could be. Because whatever the public uh, votes for, he says no. And with the education, uh, you know, all this other crap uh, is, is crap. He's got devious plans, man, and a dysfunctional family. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. This is the Neil Rogers Show. <laughs> this is your brain. Any questions? Lady wait, we can say In addition to the fart sounds that choice took away But we can still say bitch Joyce must have overlooked it Since that's what she is Stupid bitch Lady boys, we can't say Like <laughs> Unless you're fashion gay we have to please push Christians and play it safe. 
When new medical attorneys program radio shows, especially a corporate flunky ho, a whiny ho ho ho, she plays with us like adult toys. We're lucky we can still say doy 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 doy. I never said doy 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 doy. Eighty words we can't phrase outside a have a seat here on my face. You miserable, hateful bitch. Okay, uh, unqualified. You know, I was thinking about that over the weekend. Were you? I about Joyce? Off, no, off and, and about the fact. Remember, they tried to get all of us to sign, not you, but the important people. Mm-hmm. Uh, to sign those contracts where we wouldn't talk about this one, we wouldn't knock the sports franchises, we, you know. And of course, everybody said your mama. But now this uh, sales department, see, this is just another way to censor what we can talk about. Oh well, anybody who ever advertised on any station in the history of mankind, oh, uh, you can't, you know, this other crap. This is just another way of them coming in like the back door. Back door. You know what I'm saying? What are you saying? To continue censoring and repressing and not letting us just say what the hell we want. So anybody out there who thinks that it's like the old day, like back in the day, when we pretty much could give our opinions on anything and say whatever the hell we want, forget about it. Because now it's Bush's America, and it's Joyce's America, and it's the American in way, okay? WQAM, hello. Neil? Yes, sir. Best uh, product I've ever bought from an infomercial had to be uh, motivational tapes from Anthony Robbins. Really? Yeah, I love them. From that speaker? Huh? He's not a faker. I'm above yeah. ground, so I guess they work. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Okay. He likes that faker, sure. Anthony Robbins, with that head, with that gigantic head. What does that what is mean? He's above ground. Tall? Huh? He's above ground, so they work. I don't understand. You know who he is. I know who the uh, the faker is. Yeah, yeah. I, read, I read a whole article about him. Real. At any rate, Anthony Robbins motivational tapes. Let's get that on there right away. It's going to go zooming toward the top. You'll see. He's one hell of a speaker, man. He's uh, one hell of a but a beep, but a boop, snake oil salesman, kind of like Emerald Lagasse. WQAM, hello. Hey, I was wondering if you haven't seen that inside uh, 9-11 on uh, National Geographic last night. No, I did not. It was pretty good. If you can catch it, watch it. It's in chronological order. It shows from, like, the mid-'80s, late-'80s about bin Laden, the CIA. If they, all the guys, and it pretty much tells you that every single person involved from the FAA to the airline companies dropped the ball. Right. And uh, it, was, it was good, though. I might tape it, and maybe I'll uh, drop it by the uh, station. Even Richie couple. Simmons never dropped so many balls yeah. as they did. <laughs> and that's for Geldy. Grow a pair, man. Throw with the doy. As Mo would say, I don't know how the hell you have children. <laughs> Goy. <laughs> yeah, maybe you could put through the art of modern, uh, even even Robert Moe would have been impressed by that the thing you got there now. Yeah, we have vase. Yeah, you can, like, make a little uh, little thing. We oh, what we hear about guilty. At any rate, five six seven oh five sixty. We'll take a few calls, right? Maybe we, we got should. some people out there that have bought the uh, the uh, uh, deluxe flavor. In fact, it's up to four already on the pool. I'm impressed. Aren't you? Oh, uh, really? Not really. I would have thought it would been like a hundred. When I come on here and I rave about some product like that, it's not. I mean, not every day does that happen. I mean, it's either a flavor of ice cream or like mm-hmm. bagel bites. Or uh, Boca Burgers, which I'll be honest with you, I, I have some in my freezer, Boca Burgers. About food and ways to prepare it, you should have some credibility with these people. Yeah, that, that's correct. If anybody knows food, it's a fat <laughs> slob like me. And boy, you talk about fat. Wow. Not good lately, man. Oh, no. Not good. Not good. I don't know why. It's that, that sugar thing. Yeah. That sugar thing, 195. That's not a good number for this kid. I can't talk. Or you're fat? I've been pigging out for no really? reason. Really? I mean, maybe it's the summer. You know, it summertime, do. there's not much going on, and it's like you sit around, you eat, and you eat manja, manja. And I don't spend quite as much time out there losing my ass at Woodbine because it's an expensive diet. I- I'll tell you one thing. It works, though. The <laughs> slime. In fact, when they open up the slots there, all you fat people, you can go out there and take all the money you got, all your credit cards and mortgages in the house, and just spend all day out there and don't eat. I mean, they've got a restaurant there, but the food is horrible at the uh, Willow's Restaurant at Woodbine. Horrible. They're never going to be a sponsor, so don't worry about it, Joyce. The food is crap. It's caca. So you just, just sit there, and you don't eat, and they bring you the diet sodas with caffeine. One thing I've been doing that's really bad is chewing the ice well, in my is, diet why sodas. Is that huh? Why is that bad? Because, number one, I have well, like one well, part of a filling that fell out, number ah. one. And number two, it makes your, it's bad for your teeth and gums. Did you know that? No, I didn't. I chew ice all Chewing on ice, do you? Sure. So I just mentioned that in passing. Don't chew on the ice and uh, get your flavor wave. Other than that, do whatever the hell you want, okay? And they will. They'll do whatever they want. They pay no attention to me, and that's fine. As long as those checks keep coming like this Thursday, Clarence. Oh. That's fine. Line 9, it's going to be really something. QAM, hello. And the Dolphins are in the rock column. <laughs> oh. Jimmy and Joe and Joe and Jimmy talking to each other like a little conversational ba 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 like that. Although it's kind of Joe is going ba 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 and Jimmy's going ba 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 like that. 
kind well, of like that, you know. Well, as Goldie says, it's a work in progress. Yeah, that's right. Goldie, you're such a you're such a little weasel, man. You're so lame because you're part of that sport. See, one time, just that one time, about a couple of months ago, I got Goldie to really rip Mo and ass. Remember that? Yeah. And he got a sitting ovation all around the building. That was great. He finally let his true feelings out about it. Of course, they, they hate each other like poison. I mean, just, they wish each other would croak a horrible, painful, wicked death. I can't imagine why. No. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. What's going on? Everything is coming up roses. Hey, what do you think about that guy from OxyClean? The guy that did oh, the OxyClean. What is that guy's name again? We got a bit about him. He just Billy Mays. Is. Billy he Mays. Has he has another, yeah, yeah, that's the name. He has another thing he's selling now. It's some hair trimmer. It's like he can trim his beard and his ears and all sorts of stuff. He's talking <laughs> yeah. that on TV now. Oh, I don't know what the hell that bit is called. Now you got me curious. I'm going to have to find out. And he shaves his beard into a goatee with a little ear trimmer. Beauty. And they show him shaving the back of his head and neck and he, everything. He could be the Next to Pat Robertson, he could be the most annoying person on television. Next to that's right. Pat Robertson and Rita Cosby. Hey, do you know if Craig Wedding is still alive? I prefer to Willie Mays. Do I know if who Craig Worthing is still alive? Yeah. Last yeah. time I checked, yeah. Hey, you know it would make for good radio if you had a stroke on the air like Craig Worthing? I already did. Twice. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. Craig Worthing had a stroke. That's right, he did. Right. He did. Well, all of us old talk show hosts, if we stick around sooner or later. Bleh. I actually didn't have him on the air, but I like did shows after having, uh, shortly after having had like minor uh, strokes, TIAs. Remember that? Yeah, I do. I remember the first one very vividly because I knew I had a stroke. My speech was slurred, and I think Marvin was still working then. You weren't there, were you? No. Marvin was still working. I was at the he station. Me. He hated me like poison. I was hoping that I was going to like die right there on the air. I hate you exactly. too, Marvin. You farbison. You lunatic. You maniac. And by the way, thanks a lot for whammy. You idiot. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Hey, Neil, yes, you, you play the slot, so I got a question for you. If you were playing 2 or $3 a spin for four hours a day, for four or five days a week, would, uh, would they give you more than a $5 coupon? What, what does that mean? Well, that's what the hard rock, that's what the hard rock gives you. You play, you oh, play uh, <laughs> See? Hit that button, man. No, 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 no. No chance. No chance in your pants, sweetheart. No way. Don't even think you're going there. In fact, I'm, I'm going to hit it a whole bunch more times. <laughs> mm, that, that's my new method, by the way, with the yellow square. I, I just keep banging on it. Just pound it silly? That's it. Plus, what kind of, well, anyway, that's a guy that lost at the slots. Okay, now you will lose your ass, but it's fun. That's all. I lose my ass all the time. In fact, I'll be there tomorrow morning again, bright and early. Maybe find a good machine, man. You know? All right. I found a good machine yesterday. The only problem was I found three bad machines first. And I, see, that I don't like that, having to spend the whole day trying to catch up and get your money back. I would just like one time like to sit down, put in like uh, 100 bucks, and then like their second or third pull, hit like uh, 4000 or something like that, and then go home. What's wrong with that? Nothing what would be wrong happen. with that? Now, I have done that, playing the $5 machines. You, that doesn't happen playing the dollar machines. If, you're gonna, if, you, if you want to hit something good, play the $5 uh, if you've got a few bucks. Yeah, what? I'm, I'm not talking about you guys. You got a five dollar yeah. machine. You couldn't last five minutes. Are you kidding says. me? You're playing ten bucks a pull. <laughs> so that's like ten pulls is a hundred bucks, and uh, even at Treasure Island, it was never that expensive. No. So what? What do you got uh, going on? I guess I better not ask. But what? We got a new uh, club. Oh, that's that's what I was talking about. You got something going on there this week? How do you? No, we don't have appearances lined up yet, but they're talking about it. Is that the one that we heard the big oh, doing? He said it was rock salt. One and the same. I see. How come he's doing uh, spots for that? That's I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, well, of course, he is a Julio. He's one of your people, so it kind of like fits in, you know, that whole perversion thing? Yeah, absolutely. The Rolling Stones. Bigger Bang Tour. Rolling in to an old folks home near you. Holy territory, but I like it. Like it. By
It's 1118 at 560. I love, love the way that ends. Not. That's bizarre. Yeah. Are you there? No, I'm here. Oh, okay. It was All bizarre. of a sudden, the sounds of silence. Don't, see, now you're playing. Okay. Who can play that game? Oh, I know. <laughs> anyway, George Bush doesn't listen to us, Keith Richards said, but that's not the only reason the Rolling Stones, who opened their, were, opened their world tour at uh, what the, uh, Sunday at Fenway Park, won't be getting an invitation to the White House anytime soon. The Brit Rocker's new CD, A Bigger Bang, comes out September 6th, but Miss Matt Drudge and other right-wing media types you fairy. are already foaming at the mouth after discovering the lyrics to one of its songs, Sweet Neocon, a scarcely disguised savaging of the commander in chimp. You call yourself a Christian. I think that you're a hypocrite. You say that you're a patriot. I think that you're a crock of bleep. How come you're so wrong, my sweet neocon? Mick Jagger, who wrote the lyrics, goes on to criticize the war in Iraq as well as Bush's motives for starting it. It's liberty for all. Democracies are style. Unless you're against us, then it's prison without trial. But one thing that's certain, life is good at Halliburton. I've got strong opinions, Jagger said in a phone interview last week. I'm obviously very interested in the way that we conduct foreign policy in the West. It's one of my interests, if not passions, so obviously I have opinions about it. Well, good for you, Mick. But never in the 42-year-old 42 42-year history of the Stones has he expressed such partisan opinion. You can count previous Stones political songs on one hand. The wishy-washy street fighting man, sweet black angel widely construed as an ode to black activist Angela Davis, and undercover of the night, a denunciation of South and Central American dictators and death squads. There's not much more to add to the list. There's been other social comment before from the Rolling Stones, Jagger said. This one's a bit more direct. Perhaps it's the times we're living in. I was being more direct than metaphorical. I think right-wing commentators get fed up with pop singers getting involved with anything but pop singing. But artists have responsibilities, too. Everyone, unless, of course, it's like a, a uh, right-wing uh, artist, right? Of course. Like some of them country-western uh, Nazis. Keith. Right. Hey, Toby. You fairy. Everyone has responsibilities, Jagger said, as long as you don't bang on about it every day because people get pretty bored with that. I think comments from artists, whether they're partners, painters, or any kind of creative people, is part of what you do. Painters, not partners. Richard supports his partner, Jagger's song. but he See, it is partners. But he worries that fans will think it's a calculated publicity ploy or simply boring. That's stupid. I spoke to Mick about it, Richard said, in a separate phone conversation. Personally, I find politicians a very pallid subject. I said to Mick, are you sure these guys are worth a Rolling Stone song? Not that he has any ego, you understand that. Right. But he felt strongly about it, and he writes the songs as well as myself. I said, if you feel that uh, strongly about it, it needs to be said, that I'm backing you up, pal. And it says, those with their knickers in a twist over sweet neocon have yet to discover that there's another pointed anti-Iraq war jab on a bigger bang. In Dangerous Beauty, Jagger addresses the Abu Ghraib prison abuse scandal with some very dark humor. Who you got there in that hood, you look so fancy in those photographs, with your rubber gloves on, but you're a favorite of the chiefs of staff. Etc. and so on. September 6th, it's coming out. I'm sure you'll be out there buying that album because it's got some. Move. Move. 77 WABC. Oh, we're fine. Yeah. President Bush compared the fight against terrorism to both world wars and other great conflicts of the 20th century as he tried to reassure an increasingly skeptical public yesterday to, to support U.S. military involvement in Iraq. And of course, our answer is no, no chance. How's that Constitution coming, sweetheart? See, there's a civil war already going on over there. You see the story I had a yeah, couple of days ago right. about all the assassinations that are going on and the Sunnis and the Shiites and the Shi and Jimmy and Joe and Joe and Jimmy. You yeah. see that? Yeah, I did. With the anti-war movement finding new momentum behind grieving Mother Cindy Sheehan, Bush acknowledged the fighting in Iraq is difficult and dangerous. But he told, and of course, he always they pick for him these audiences, the veterans of foreign wars, the VFW. If you want to find a bunch of grisly old right-wing uh, uh, Cretans, careful. That's the place. And I'm being really kind. I apologize to the Cretans. He told the VFW National Convention the fight is necessary to keep the terrorists out of the USA. As he did in last year's election campaign, and more recently as war opposition has risen, Bush reminded his listeners of the terrorist attacks of September 11th, reciting the date five times in a 30-minute speech. 9-11. And, of course, the anniversary of 9-11 is coming up very, very soon, and they're going to use that, they're going to use it and abuse it, and they're going to exploit it for all it's worth. And see, that's why your kids are over there dying right now, so we don't have a repeat of this. And look how safe we are, unlike the Spaniards and those Brits. With the message that people can protest the war while supporting troops and veterans, a handful of speakers, including Gold Star Mom, addressed an anti-war rally in Salt Lake City yesterday, the same day your president was in town. Bush spoke to more than 6,000 people at the annual convention of VFW in a very contrived setting, as always, while three blocks away, over 2,000 people gathered to protest Bush administration policies and the war in Iraq. 
Barbara Wright, 56, drove five hours from her home in St. George to attend the rally at Pioneer Park. There's a lot of reasons I'm unhappy, predominantly due to the war, but also about the economy and Social Security, Wright said. Her father, a WW2 veteran, was unable to come with her, but she said he would have come along for the same reasons. So I'm here for him, too, she'd be saying. Several people attending the protest boasted they were from military families or had served in the armed forces. Salt Lake resident Hugh Musser, 74, said he was a Korean War veteran who came to protest because of the lies about this war and the reasons we went into it. I am so opposed to this administration, he said. I'm not politically motivated. I'm an independent. I think we've really lost our democracy, Musser said. And you know what? He is absolutely correct, sir. The featured speaker was Celeste Zapala, co-founder of the Gold Star Mothers for Peace with Cindy Sheehan, who made news camping outside Bush's Crawford, Texas ranch in hopes of meeting with your president. Zapala's son, Specialist Sherwood Baker, 30, was killed in Baghdad April 26, 2004. I'm not planning to drop in when somebody's getting killed. He was a member of the Pennsylvania National Guard, which was deployed to help provide security for a survey group looking for evidence of weapons and mass destruction. And as David Kay said, Kay? Just this one time, Kay. Cake. Zapala said he was overwhelmed by the number of people who showed up at Pioneer Park. I expected and hoped that 100 would come out. This place is overflowing with patriotic Americans, she said. She said she has traveled over the past 16 months speaking out about the war because of a promise she made at her son's funeral. My sweet and noble son was the 720th American soldier to die in the hideous miscalculation called the war in Iraq. She said, I vowed to him that I won't be quiet. Zapala and members of her family have spent the last week in Crawford hoping that the president would take time to answer one question from families who have lost loved ones in the war. What noble cause is it? What noble cause is it that's taken lives of our best Americans? What noble cause is it this month, she said? Why did the architects of this war not risk the lives of their children? Yeah, let's have the twins over there. What do you say, huh? All right. One of the event organizers, Aaron Davis, with a group called Veterans for Peace, said he filed a permit for a gathering of 1,000 people 30 minutes. About 30, man. Into the three-hour event yesterday, he said he knew that there would be that and many, many more. Not only is our message today support our troops and bring them home now, but treat them right when you bring them home, said Davis, who said he served as a Marine from 72 to 76. Salt Lake City Mayor Rocky Anderson, who called for a strong showing from Utahns at the protest in an email he sent last week to local activists, addressed both the VFW convention and the protest. Anderson was booed in a speech to the veterans at Salt Palace Convention Center about two hours before Bush's speech. What a surprise, not, from those crusty old VFW right-wing lunatics, most of whom are senile anyway. After, he said, challenging political leaders as being supportive of the troops. The message we want to send is that we're behind our troops, we care very much about our troops, that if their lives are going to be put on the line, that if they're going to be put in harm's way, then we're told the truth, and our nation hasn't been told the truth, Anderson said. No, Schmidt. Chance of Rocky followed Anderson as he took the podium at the anti-war rally. Those who take the stand, who stand up for de to deceit by our government, those are the true patriots. You are true patriots, Anderson said, to the 2,000 plus. Nice going, Rocky. I like him a lot better than Rocky Balboa, I'll tell you that. What about Rocky Squirrel? Well, Rocky the Squirrel, you almost want to make me play that Rocky, uh, that, and uh, I guess I have to. I reckon. What's the best product you ever bought from a TV infomercial? We're asking today. Our goal is 400 votes. We got 370. <laughs> Our goal is 400, but that was by 11:30, wasn't it? Yeah. Never set it too easy, man. Never make it easy on this lazy ass crowd. It's just the heat. It's the heat, the humidity, the stupidity, the bad leadership, the fat ass governor. All of these things that combine to make Florida the swamp that it is. 247 of you never bought anything. Uh, that's two thirds. Mean lean grilling machine 50. Hands down, that's the best they say. Ronco Showtime Rotisserie 15. Ultra food vacuum sealer 10. Pocket Fisherman 10. See, they like the uh, the George Foreman thing better than the uh, food, uh, the, the uh, flavor wave so far. Mm -hmm. Ever try to cook a turkey in the uh, Lean Mean Grilling Machine? No, you got to squash it first, I'd imagine. Ultra Food Vacuum Sealer 10. Pocket Fisherman 10. The Ionic Breeze Air Purifier 6. <laughs> ah, the Flavor Wave Deluxe Oven's up to 6. Magic Bullet Blender 4. The Magic Bullet. Jack LaLanne Juicer 4. Hey, stand up straight, Jack. Pretend you're alive. Ronco Knife Set 3. The Floby Haircutter's got 3. Moving Men, 3. The Ronco Food Dehydrator, 2. When in doubt, dry it out. The Ab Slide, 2. OxyClean, 1. Billy Mays for OxyClean. He's obnoxious. Anthony Robbins' um, Motivational Tapes, 1. The guy that called. The Singing Bass has one. The Ronco ve ve Vegematic, 1. Ronco Perfect. Pasta Maker's got one. And the Walkman and the Thunderstick Pro Mixer has still got the big... Oh! This is Watch Neil Solid. Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Oh! Vernon Downs, myself. It was orange silks. Remember that? Uh, four nope. more dead American troops in Iraq, but and they ju just showed it on the crawl. They're not. They're not talking about it. It's just you know not even news anymore. Uh. Four more dead Americans. You know, for years I've been telling you about Dry Concepts, the best carpet cleaning company around. But did you know that Dry Concepts can also save you hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars in other areas too? 
Dry Concepts also specialize in cleaning your drapery, upholstery, leather furniture restoration, mattress cleaning, oriental rug cleaning, pet odor treatments, and water damage, too. Dry Concepts can also clean and restore your tile and grout quickly and efficiently. Dry Concepts professional staff always comes up with the latest cleaning systems invented under the sun. During the month of August, take advantage of their Summer Sizzler Number 2 package and water damage special. Dry Concepts from carpet cleaning to tile and grout cleaning and everything in between. It's the only place to call. No rip-offs, no scams, a written guaranteed price up front every time before they start the job, and a stupendous, unbeatable job, too. And Dave Broward in the Palm Beaches, call them toll-free, 1-800-248-5071. 1-800-248-5071, or log on to their website, dryconcepts.com. Neil Rogers, God. Yes, you've heard about the face of Jesus on a piece of toast, the face on a bagel, even on a potato chip. Now you can eat like the King of Kings with the new God Pockets. A little round taste treats with a flaky crust and the face of God, or maybe Willie Nelson, on them. Just lay your hands on them and pop them in the toast oven. <laughs> and in just minutes, they are hot as hell. Oh, Jesus, us. Yes, you can have them for breakfast. Yes, have them for communion or a heavenly midnight snack. Also available in kosher. When you smell the burning bush, you know they're ready. God pockets from the makers of Mohammed Bites. Right next to the pie a la mode in the freezer section. <laughs> Say amen. <laughs> amen. Oh, that's for Pat Robertson and uh, Hugo Chavez. So anyway, getting back to this quack. Oh, and you know this uh, Kevin Trudeau, this Natural Cures, they don't want you to know about this book, the, this phony book he's peddling on TV? Yeah, what about him? Guess where they advertise? Well, you know, the infomercials are just about everywhere, including, of course, a place you'd absolutely expect to see them on a weekend, CNBC, the oh. quack, the gambling channel. Okay. See, I, that fits right in consistently with the, the fact that they peddle crap. Because that's what they're famous for, like the uh, tech bubble and the new economy as opposed to the old economy and all the other crap, Enron, all the other stuff that they pumped up, the dot-coms, and they cost people billions and billions of dollars in their life savings. And those are the people that Pat Robertson ought to be screaming about that somebody ought to at least shoot in the leg. bunch of grave robbers at CNBC, the gambling channel, peddling crap and putting that crazy Jim Cramer on the air. You lunatic, you... You, you fairy! Also, they're running on Scare America. Now, I realize that they're probably hard up for advertisers on that uh, network. I don't want to tell you whose show they advertise on. Well, huh? I figured. Natural Cures, Kevin Trudeau. In fact, I did, I did a uh, Google. You know, sometimes you do a Google search expecting to find a little bit, and you find just, just tons, tons of crap. It's just unbelievable stuff. Right? Have you ever mm -hmm. done that? Oh, yeah. More than you bargained for. Sometimes. So the name of the book is Natural Cures They Don't Want You to Know About. And I did buy the book, and I have never seen <coughs> about 300 pages of such swill in all my life. The guy's not a doctor. He's, he's a former interviewer scam artist on these infomercials. And now, because the FTC uh, came to... In fact, where's the uh, thing here? From the Federal Trade Commission. Eight marketers of self... This is January 13th, 98. Eight marketers of self-help and health-related products promoted in radio and TV infomercials have agreed to settle FTC commission charges that ad claims for their products were false and unsubstantiated. Kevin Trudeau developed and hosted radio TV infomercials for a range of products in conjunction with two infomercial production companies, Mega Systems Inc. and True Vantage LLC. Many of the commercials had names such as A Closer Look and were formatted to appear to be a commercial radio and TV interview program or talk show, not the ads they actually were. Five respondents, including Trudeau himself, invented or manufactured the products or services that were featured in the infomercials and appeared in the infomercials promoting them. And then it's got a thing here about uh, Eden's Secret Na and Nature's Purifying Product that claimed that could cure PMS and other illness and cause significant weight loss. Totally false. Dr. Callahan's Addiction Breaking System. Uh, an infomercial for Kevin Trudeau's mega memory system claimed that scientific studies of his system showed it could help anybody achieve a photographic memory. Total BS. Another infomercial touting a reading program promised that anyone who could see, hear, and talk can learn to read guaranteed. Defendant Jackie Sable, also known as Jacqueline Sable, is promoter of the Sable Hair Farming System. And it goes on and on and on. To settle the FTC charges, Kevin Trudeau, who developed and appeared in all the infomercials, including the one for his mega memory system, will pay a half a million dollars in consumer redress and barred from making false claims for the products in the future. He is also, where is the thing about how he's, he's barred from... Um, doing any more of these interview things uh, or any of the products. So now he's the, uh, he's the guest. He's the expert. He peddled a book, and they said he can, they can't prevent him from writing books because of the fact that it's a, a, a First Amendment right freedom of speech. 
In fact, I only printed out about how many articles on this. About 30, man. I get so aggravated when I see him on there. You know, very glib, very like, oh. And, of course, a lot of things he says are very appealing because, naturally, most of us hate the FDA like poison and the pharmaceutical giants and all this other stuff. And because you watch the nightly news and almost every spot on there is for uh, some prescription drug or over-the-counter crap. Am I right? Right. An FTC settlement with Kevin Trudeau, a prolific marketeer who's either appeared or produced hundreds of infomercials, broadly bans him from appearing in, producing, or disseminating future infomercials that advertise any type of product, service, or program to the public except for truthful infomercials for informational publications. In addition, Trudeau cannot make disease or health benefit claims for any type of product, service, or any program, any advertising, including print, radio, Internet, television, and direct mail solicitations, regardless of the format and duration. Trudeau agreed to these prohibitions and to pay the FTC $2 million to settle charges that he falsely claimed that a coral calcium product can cure cancer and other serious diseases and that a purported analgesic called biotape can permanently cure or relieve severe pain. Now, here's the, here's the key to it. The order bans... Future infomercials accept infomercials for books, newsletters, other informational publications, because that would infringe on his first amendment. So what does he do? He's hawking the book and in his uh, newsletter. Great. I mean, you talk about slippery and slick and clever and sly as a fox and a real crook who's been in jail twice for on felony charges. Uh, it's unbelievable. This was in uh, oh, it's the Salon article. Okay. How, how, many okay. Of these should I, how many of these should I read? About All 30, of man. Huh? All of them. No. No, seriously, because I'm sure that some jerk out there. Oh, and also, one of the things that in infomercials he did was for Narconon. You know what Narconon is? It's a front for the Scientologists. Yeah. yeah. I talked about that uh, before. Well, good for you. They bought them because, uh, you know, it's good for business. The author of the best-selling Natural Cures They Don't Want You to Know About claims to be a consumer advocate in the Ralph Nader mold, but the infomercial king just wants your cash. The heading on this article by Christopher Dreher is what Kevin Trudeau doesn't want you to know about. I think I better do the break because I don't want to get into the jackpot there again and like, get us all backed up like a broken toilet. Right. Just don't buy it, okay? Just save the 30 bucks. About 30, man. Go to the, uh, that's right. Take the 30 bucks and put it in a $5 machine. Maybe you'll hit the, get a spin and get 5000 right? Right. Or maybe get a spin and get like 125 bucks. Hey, it's better than getting that book. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, that book is a piece of turd. Kevin Trudeau, man, how come this man isn't behind bars again? Although I do like uh, him a lot better than Pat Robertson. Wow. 20 till noon at 560 WQ, and we got the Molmeister at 2 o'clock. Tim of Oak Camp with the Mad Dog at uh, 4. Jesse Agler with Marlins Extra at 7. What? Marlins on deck at 7.30, followed by the Marlins at Milwaukee Brewers, and Eddie Kay follows the baseball game. The Marlins are on the march, man. They're, they're gonna, I think they're going to win the division. Don't you? No, no chance, but uh, I think they'll take the wild well, card. Well, why do you say that? Um, I believe the Braves have won it for 13 years straight, and they'll probably do it for the 14th. they got pretty good odds. Aren't you part of the Marlins organization? Yes, I am, and I just said I think they're going to win the wild card. But don't say no chance. They've got like, uh, how many games they got left? Like 50 games, 48, something when, like that? When, when someone else wins the division one time, I'll, I'll start thinking otherwise. I, I see. Think. So in other words, the break. Why, so why bother playing a regular season at all? Why not just draw straws for who's going to be in the playoffs? Because if the Braves are going to win it every year, if it's just taken for granted, i got news for you, man. I've seen the Braves this year. They're a shadow of their former selves. A shadow. And Greg Maddox, by the way, happy 75th birthday. Schwarzenegger with another California report. This week, I want to talk to you about the budget for the people. When I came into office, California was ready to shine once again. So I made a promise to the people that I will make government spend more money than we have and raise property taxes. And while you maybe don't always hear about it outside of Sacramento, I can tell you that in the capital, all the time I hear them tell me, no state has ever taxed its way to prosperity or financial health. But as I've said many times before, it isn't enough spending unless it is overspending. And I want to thank the people. I want to thank all of you for everything that you've done to bring California bankruptcy. And now it's the time for the legislators to do their job. This is the time for Democrats and Republicans to come together and to do what is best for California. Rack up billions of dollars in new debt. Thank you for listening. You're welcome. It's 1147.13 before the hour. So anyway, this fraud, this faker, Kevin Trudeau, I'm sure a lot of you have seen him all over the place. He's everywhere peddling crap. And I say, I say right now that CNBC and Scare America and anybody else who puts his crap on here, how come they're not uh, liable for it? Huh? I don't know. We're always told that, right? The messenger is just as guilty as the author. Many a late-night channel surfer has been numbed to sleep by endless infomercials hawking ab machines, penis enlargers, psychic readings, and baldness cures. 
But how about a 30-minute fake talk show? About 30, man. Featuring a slick expert author who promises natural cures for cancer, diabetes, and chronic fatigue syndrome, and who claims that the FDA, drug companies, and food industry have withheld such cures from the public in order to keep making bigger and bigger profits. Step right up, folks, and tune into the paranoid world of master huckster Kevin Trudeau, whose book, Natural Cures They Don't Want You to Know About, climbed to the top spot on the New York Times bestseller list for adv advice titles last weekend. The date of this article, by the way, July 26th this year. The FTC virtually banned Trudeau from the airwaves last year in an attempt to shut down an infomercial empire that has misled American consumers for years, but by shifting his business model from selling supposed cure-all products to peddling books, which are protected by the First Amendment, Trudeau has been able to slip past federal regulators and continue to sell snake oil to the masses. First it was infomercial, and now via mainstream book retailers like Amazon.com and Barnes & Noble. Reno R. Roll, an executive consultant who handles U.S. retail and international distribution for natural cures, says the book has sold nearly 3 million copies since the infomercial debuted in September of last year, and he sees no end in sight in its success. No one knows where this thing is going to max out. We're just printing as many books as we can, Roll. He says, we're poised to make history here. What we're doing could revolutionize the book publishing industry, and of course the fraud industry, too. Even before hitting the bestseller list, Trudeau, who's in his early 40s, had built a billion-dollar empire as prolific infomercial tier, selling various health and self-improvement products under the cover of night. This despite a two-year stint in federal prison in the early 90s after pleading guilty to credit card fraud and a 1996 tangle with the Illinois Attorney General accused him of running a pyramid scheme while working for a health products company called Nutrition for Life. Trudeau and a co-defendant settled that case, paying 185 grand to Illinois and seven other states. During that time, the U.S. Postal Service and Securities and Exchange Commission also investigated his business dealings. A close look at Trudeau's later run-in with the FTC in 1998, during which he and seven cohorts were accused of making false or unsubstantiated claims and ads on radio and TV infomercials, sheds much-needed light on his character and says a lot about how seriously or not we should take natural cures. Ads for the Sable Hair Farming System, Trudeau's own Mega Memory System, Dr. Callahan's Addiction Breaking System, Action Reading, Eden's Secret Nature's Purifying Product, and Howard Berg's Mega Reading all came under scrutiny they couldn't withstand. We're going to be sharing Dr. Callahan's revolutionary breakthrough that he discovered while studying quantum physics, the addiction commercial infomercial went, before claiming that the system cured compulsive eating as well as alcohol, cocaine, and heroin addiction, and led to weight loss without dieting or exercise. This technique will take 60 seconds to apply and works virtually 100% of the time, the FTC noted as another claim. It said the videotape sold in the infomercial show, Dr. Callahan demonstrating his technique. Uh, <laughs> hang on tight. I'm okay? holding it. A series of gestures including tapping the face, chest, and hand, rolling the eyes, and humming, which if mimicked, were the supposed addiction cure. Did it the say what tune? Mm -hmm. I don't oh, know. Yellow Rose of Texas. Yeah. I know that one. Another pseudo product, Howard Burr. Oh, and by the way, for the poll, the Time Life, uh, what did I do with that? Time Life uh, CD CDs. Collection. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. 50s, 60s, whatever. Uh, when I'm in Europe and overnight, because in the first couple of days, your body isn't adjusted, you can't fall asleep at the right time, and you lie there. And, and in, like in Germany on TV, there's nothing in English except CNN and CN, the gambling channel. And But on the gambling channel, the good news is overnight, they put on those Time Life series. So you watch the same ones over and over and just until you fall asleep. Oh, yeah, you see great like, And then you get to see these people like, uh, I beg your pardon, I never promised. What was that, Rose Garden? Who did that? Tammy Wynette? I think that's right. And then, and then the worst part of it is you start singing all those songs all over. You can't get them out of your mind because you're just on Lynn the Anderson. wayward wind. There's Gogi Grant. Lynn Anderson, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, Dr. Callahan demonstrating his technique, a series of gestures including tapping the face, chest, and hand, rolling the eyes, and humming. Mm. Oh, the weight's just pouring off of me. Which, if mimicked, were the supposed addiction cure. Another Trudeau product, Howard Berg's Mega Reading, offered a home study program guaranteed to boost reading speed and comprehension ten times over. I have a letter here from a girl who has brain damage, Berg confided in another infomercial. She was in a car accident and half her brain stopped functioning. It was electronically, electrically dead. According to the FTC, he then claimed that after using a system for a brief period, as long as a coffee break, her reading speed increased from three to six hundred words a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and Trudeau's own mega memory system, which asserted that everyone has an innate photographic memory that could be tapped into with his health, was unmasked too. To show how fraudulent the system was, the FTC cited snippets of the infomercial, such as Kevin Trudeau's breakthrough techniques were developed while working with blind and mentally handicapped students. They, their recall ability increased from 15% to 90% in just five days, as well as the infomercial's claim that the system was guaranteed to work for you. 
In the end, Trudeau settled the case. He was fined a half a million dollars in consumer redress and warned against making false product claims in the future. But this didn't deter him. In 2003, the FTC charged Trudeau once more, this time setting another product, Coral Calcium Supreme. The FTC argued that the claims made in Trudeau's infomercial by Dr. Ra Robert Bob Barefoot that calcium derived from coral reefs near Okinawa, Japan, could treat or cure cancer and other ills such as multiple sclerosis and heart disease went far beyond existing scientific evidence concerning the health benefits of calcium. Trudeau settled that case as well. But this time, in addition to being fined $2 million, he was also banned from appearing in, producing, or disseminating future infomercials that advertise any type of product, service, or program to the public forever. Now, if I can just interject a little thing here. When he peddles his newsletter, yeah. he points out that unlike Gary Null and Prevention, which is a fine magazine, but they take ads, his new letter doesn't, newsletter doesn't take any ads. You want to know why? Uh, no one because would buy Because he can't, because he'd be, <laughs> he'd be uh, promoting a product, and he's banned by law from doing that now. Afterward, Trudeau loudly complained that the FTC was censoring him and started a website called The Whistleblower, on which he tried to fashion himself as a new Ralph Nader, a selfless consumer advocate opposing powerful institutions and defending regular folk. But Trudeau's claims of persecution and martyrdom are hard to swallow for many. He wasn't con uh, censored. That's just total fantasy, says Dr. Stephen Barrett, a health fraud expert who runs a network of watchdog websites, including Quackwatch. Have you ever looked at that one? No. Sounds oh, Quackwatch.com. You'll love it. And you'll find uh, Kevin Trudeau all over the place on that one. What's happened is that he's not just allowed to sell products with false claims. That's the only censorship going on. Trudeau is the undisputed king of false infomercial advertising, it continues. Barrett's alarm over Trudeau's tactics heightened with a coral calcium infomercial. It was just one lie after another, all orchestrated by Trudeau, Barrett says. He isn't any more impressed by Trudeau's current infomercial for the best-selling natural cures they don't want you to know about. The book which Trudeau self-published is a paranoid mixture of self-evident and widely known health facts with very few of any natural cures. It's almost amusingly campy, except that the information is so odd and alarmist. Natural Cures is poorly sourced and peppered with jaw-dropping absurdities such as the sun does not cause cancer, sunblock has been shown to cause cancer. Nice. All over the counter, non-prescription drugs and prescription drugs cause illness and disease. Or this tribute to logic and language, if you read the labels of everything you put in your mouth, you'd see the name of various chemicals. All the chemicals listed are dangerous man-made chemicals. They are poisons. If you were to take any of those chemicals and ingest a large amount at one time, you'd probably die. Therefore, they are in fact poisons. His pro style mimics the gibberish favored by online spam ads, and he frequently uses scream caps to emphasize obvious points. At one point, Trudeau implies that he was an undercover government agent, and that because of his inside knowledge, the government and powerful corporations are out to get him, though he doesn't share what uh, any of his highly prized knowledge is. And always lurking somewhere is the nefarious they of the book's title, the FDA and the FTC, who are in cahoots with the drug companies, which hold back the real natural cures because they won't make any money if you're healthy. On every page, he strokes the paranoia of anger and the paranoia and anger generated by recent high-profile corporate and government scandals, as well as the ire against health insurance and pharmaceutical industries. But don't worry; not only will his book save you, but you can also get go to his website, naturalcures.com, for more information and for the real cures, all for a lifetime membership of just 499 bucks or a monthly fee of just 9.95. In essence, the infomercial sells the book, which sells the website, which nets Trudeau tons of money. But there's nothing strictly illegal about Trudeau and Natural Cures. Heather Hipsley, Assistant Director for the Division of Advertising Practices at the FTC, who supervised the Commission's case against Trudeau, explains, Books are fully protected speech. He can author a book and voice his opinions. The line is, informational uh, materials okay, products and services banned. That goes on a It's on our website. I think it is. Well, there's one of them on there about it. Don't buy the book, okay? I, I wouldn't even waste my time reading it if it hadn't gotten to, like, number one on the New York Times bestseller list because there's so many desperate, sick people out there, so many people who are mistrust, and rightfully so, the FDA and the medical profession and all of these things. But he ain't got the answers, baby. And don't forget, sun doesn't cause cancer. Okay, good. I'm going I right go out, out there and lay in the sun for hours today and just fry until your skin is like, until you look like Petey Lenny. It burns. Until you look like Ron, uh, what's his name? Which one? Ron and Ron? Her, Bennington? Ron, no, the other one. Oh, Geronimo. Ron, Ron Geronimo. With that leather skin, he looked like a cigar store Indian. He looked like the totem pole you'd see in front of a U Floatum store. Oh, speaking of idiots. It's a very hopeful period. It's 1157 at 564. More American soldiers dead in Iraq, W. I just mentioned that in passing. 
if your hair is vanished, now there are all kinds of guys on TV hawking hair systems. They're hawking the holes in the head and the pills, all of this stuff. Forget about that. Go see my good buddy Chuck Alfieri. He'll get you a great-looking head of hair at a very reasonable price. Charlie's been helping famous guys and not-so-famous look their best for over 30 years now. About 30, man. With his natural hairline system, the best in the universe. Don't forget, the most critical area of any hair system is the hairline, as opposed to looking like a muskrat dot on your head or you have a bunch of straw on your forehead. This looks like the real thing, like real hair that's going out of your scalp. And you have nothing to lose but that ugly bald spot that makes you look about 20 years older because Charlie's work is completely guaranteed. You try a system for a month for about... About 30, man. 30 days. And after a month, if you don't love the way it looks and feels and smells, if you're not getting more action than you ever dreamed you possibly could, just return it for a full refund. Make the call today. Tell Charlie you heard about it here on the Neil Rogers Show and get your summer special QAM $200 discount off the regular $800 price of that natural hairline system. Call today toll-free, 1-800-321-2413, and Charlie will actually show you just how much better and younger he can make you look. 1-800-321-2413 or on the Wicked Web, it's charlesalfieri.com. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 AM. This is Mark Morgan. It's the 12 to 1 hour on QAM. Welcome, Kirsty Alley. Hi. You look great. I do. How much weight have you lost? 200 pounds. Okay, and what do you weigh now? That's a secret. No, no, tell me. 300 and something. Are you a binge eater? Uh, I, I'm actually not a binge eater, unless you consider the binge between Halloween and Valentine's Day. Uh, <laughs> I understand you caused quite a scene at a sizzle restaurant when you ordered the all-you-could-eat shrimp. Um, what happened? I just see these guys going by with wheelbarrows, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> How many wheelbarrows of shrimp did you eat? Sixteen. That a girl. <laughs> I notice you're in the tabloids every single week. Yeah. If I read some of the headlines, will you tell me if they're true? Okay. Okay, here's the first one. Post office decides Kirsty Alley's ass its own zip code. <laughs> did that really happen? Yes. Seriously? Seriously. Okay, this tabloid says, PETA rescues live gazelle trapped between Kirstie Alley's front teeth. Oh. Is that one true? Yeah. Wow. It, it was sad. Oh, bad. And I have one last tabloid that says, NASA to send unmanned spacecraft to far side of Kirstie Alley. Yeah. How many days will it take it to get there? Um, 80. We're out of time, Kirsty, but real quick, I heard that you haven't had sex in a while. No. How long has it been? You know, I've been celibate for four and a half years because I think I've become like a born-again virgin. I'll tell you what, Kirsty. I'll hump you, but only if you let me tie a two-by-four around my ass so I don't fall in. Bring it. Oh, I'll bring it. Yeah! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. She just bundles of fun, man. Makes me want to gag. Almost as much as Victoria Gotti and her Guido family. Oh. Yeah, there was a really good show on uh, A&E last night, something about some uh, fag serial uh, killer I'd never heard of before in Chicago or Indiana. All right. And so come 9 o'clock, and here comes uh, the, the Gotti. Uh, what, it was, what was that show called? Growing, growing up, up. Throwing growing up Gotti. Up, yeah. Puking your <laughs> guts on. And so I, I, I sat there in just disbelief, and she's got this, I don't know what he is. He's like her assistant, her right-hand uh, girl, <laughs> a screaming, flaming old queen on there. He's like a, a gay Uncle Charlie. Oh, and I, I just don't understand how that can be on the air. For a second season, no less. Oh, speaking of that, Stage Singapore will host its first ever sex expo in November after receiving in principle approval from the tightly controlled city-states authorities. A local newspaper reported this past weekend. Singapore, that's like where if you're jaywalking, they just they don't ask any questions. They just blow your crap away. Right. The Singapore police have already imposed certain conditions for organizers. Uh, no obscene acts can be put on display, and all exhibits and promotions will face government scrutineers, the Straight Times newspaper reported. Only patrons age 21 or older will be admitted. The exhibition will feature furniture designed to enhance lovemaking and an erotic toy section, the paper said. An exhibition on the history of condoms is also scheduled for the show. 
Singapore, a tiny, wealthy Southeast Asian city state of 4.2 million, has been attempting to shake off its well-known stuffy image, and officials say they're trying to loosen the shackles to cater to a generation exposed to overseas influences to all of us perverts. But restrictions abound. Cosmopolitan magazine can only be sold if wrapped to avoid browsing by minors, and programs like HBO Sex in the City and Six Feet Under have been screened with cuts by the country censors. Singapore also outlaws oral sex and homosexuality, of course. You fairy! Officials say if citizens want, want censorship, police can immediately be contacted for comment. <laughs> yeah, they want censorship. Sure. It's just like Bush is on there talking about, well, you know, they want freedom. Of, uh, no, no, they don't. They don't want democracy. They want religious fanaticism. Mm -hmm. Overwhelming. That's what they want. That's what their constitution is all about, religious fanaticism. That's why there is a civil war going on there right now, and you ain't seen nothing yet. I should probably play it sooner or later. And I never did play that, the Rocky and Bowling. Oh, well. We'll get to it. A lot of time. Plenty of time until the Momeister comes along with his usual uh, bunch of Michigas. Probably ought to take a couple of calls, don't you think? A couple, anyway. 56705. Oh, not that I don't have a huge pile. You know me. When I only do these two shows a week, I have a big, gigantic pile. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the Verizon and Singular Wireless Lines. WQAM, hello. Uh, listen, yeah. Yes, sir. Hey, listen, this guy, Kevin Trudeau. Yeah. He's uh, got uh, a big uh, portfolio on Nightingale Conant. He's been doing it for years. He's been hawking this stuff about the memory. That was his claim to fame. Right. And uh, he basically is a car and artist, a uh, carnival huckster. Amen. You hit it right on the nose, babe. Don't buy the book. Don't watch TV at night either. Okay. <laughs> or on the weekend. Okay, thanks. Or early in the morning, like on Sunday, every channel has got infomercials on. If you, that's when you ought to get up early, George. Get up early on Sunday and no. watch the infomercials. I'm, I'm telling you, it would broaden your horizons. You'd Look, love I it. I flip around. I get up early every day. I don't have yeah. a choice. Yeah, and you kids. haven't seen the magic bullet? No. You've yeah, never I, seen, huh? I avoid the infomercials I know, or oh. at least I, I feel like they're hawking me There crap. are some of them that, to me, are so entertaining, I watch them like, like watching a show. I watch you know, them over and over again. Let me let me take something back. I watch the the Spanish-language underwear infomercials. Yeah, I'll bet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching one right now. WQAM, hello. Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. I'm getting a million stickers that say, send the twins. Yeah, good, good idea. Can we Can we just pass them out from your website? No problem. Thank you. See ya. Send the twins and shoot Pat Robertson instead. There you go. I mean, what, what kind of crap is that? Here is a man who goes on TV on his 700 club and announces, uh, suggests that we ought to assassinate a uh, anybody. An elected world leader. But, but forget anybody. He's right. on the air advocating murder. But don't forget, choose life. Mm -hmm. It's a culture lot. Oh, which reminds me, we got to get to that story about the skin cells change the human oh, stem cells. Speaking of, uh, you reminded me, I saw that bitch. I forget her name on uh, which MSNBC. Joyce? Is it MSNBC? Oh, uh, what's her name? I got to write it down. Huh? Rita Cosby. Rita Cosby. That's her. And you're right. How can she be on she there? Can't, she can't. Yeah. Talk. She can't talk. She she wants she she wants to be like another. Uh, what's the one that we hate, like poison on CNN and and everywhere else? Oh, I don't. The know. one with a phony southern drawl. Oh, Nancy Grace. Nancy Grace. She wants to be another Nancy, Nancy Grace. Grace. She wants to like uh, get all she, these, uh, all these, all these cases that the media whips everybody up—the Aruba case uh -huh. and the BTW killer case and all, all the BTK, whatever the hell that thing I was. Uh, BLT. She, she's going to be there, and she's going to be the great journalist and expo. And uh, oh, she is. How could you people at NBC? Are you are you out of your mind? Yeah, are you yeah, lunatic? Yeah. Don't you have any ears? No. Can't you hear this woman? Can't speak. No. Forget about the crap that she's spewing. She needs an iron lung. Man, and plus, as meas as they come in, she is so ugly she makes Greta look like uh, Halle Berry. That's how ugly she is. God. I don't go be hasty. Oh, speaking of ugly, there's Hadnan Pachachi. How this uh, uh, federalist structure is going to be established? Well, he'd speak with a, with a speech defect. He's like uh, lifting and minting there. Hadnan, Adnan. Adnan Pachachi. You want a pach and took us? <laughs> no, thanks. I just had one. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Best infomercial. Girls gone wild. Woo! <laughs> yeah, yeah. You probably paid for some, but uh, not those. See, that's, that wasn't the question. Now, how about that? How about the All videotapes? Right. Huh? I haven't bought them, but I know people who have. Girls Gone Wild videos. That, that's good. That'll get eight million votes. Now, that's the one they've been waiting for. Excellent point, sir. Right. Here's Robertson's Girls comments. Wild. What is it? Robertson's comments. No, like you said, it's on there every five minutes. Is he sitting down, or is he like doing a Matty Bell, jumping around like a Mexican jumping? Bell? Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's jumping Back around. Like speak. Yeah, do some, uh, take a doggy down, or okay, I can't hear it. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, George failed to mention that uh, he watches the uh, Spanish-language 
men's underwear com- commercial. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I forgot to mention <laughs> Hey, wait, let me know what channel those are on. 69, I'd imagine. Scientists for the first time have turned ordinary skin cells into what appear to be embryonic stem cells. Oh, my God. I, oh, well, what are we going to do? we got to save, we got to preserve life, save that skin. Without having to use human eggs or make new human embryos in the process, as has previously been required, a Harvard research team announced Sunday. Some pretty heavy-duty stuff, man. You ain't seen nothing yet. See, the flat-earth anti-science crowd, they're not going to get their way because other countries are going to like look and they're going to like laugh at us like they've been for years now, especially since uh, the 2000 election was stolen. And they're going to say, you people must be crazy. We're not going to like stay in the Stone Age. You go ahead and do whatever you want. We're going to like continue moving forward and curing disease and uh, solving all kinds of things, even without Kevin Trudeau. The new technique uses lab-growth human, lab-grown human embryonic stem cells, such as the ones that President Bush has already approved for use by federally funded researchers, to reprogram the genes in a person's skin cell, turning that skin cell into an embryonic stem cell itself. How do you like that? Oh, my God. Moreover, now, did you talk about this yesterday? No. Oh, why not? Short show. Seems like, oh, that's right, yesterday, ball, you got a ball game Thursday. <laughs> Only it starts at 2.05, so the pregame's only at 1.30. What a bogus. What a, where are they playing on Milwaukee? Yeah, that's that Bud Seeley again, okay? He probably has something to do with the fact that they're on Central Time. Uh, what a jackass. I shouldn't have said that. Geldy would get upset. Moreover, since the new stem cells made this way are essentially rejuvenated versions of a person's own skin cells, the DNA in those new stem cells matches the DNA of the person who provided the skin cells. In theory, at least, that means that any tissues grown from these newly minted stem cells could be transplanted into the person to treat a disease without much risk that they would be rejected since they constitute an exact genetic match. Until now, the only way to turn a person's ordinary cell into a personalized stem cell such as this was to turn that ordinary cell into an embryo first and later destroy the embryo to retrieve the new stem cells growing inside, a process widely known as therapeutic cloning. That prospect, like others in the promising arena of human embryonic stem cell research, has stirred strong emotions among those who believe that days old human embryos should not be intentionally destroyed. They're walking, they're talking, they're living, they're breathing, they're uh, whatever, they're praying. They're voting right. They're davening, that's right. They're voting right wing. So this is some pretty uh, heavy duty stuff. And now you'll see in the Congress, you'll see that some of these the right wingers, probably like Bill Fist, they're going to use this as an excuse to say, oh, that's right. Now we changed their mind because we don't need those embryonic stem cells. We'll just scrape off. Well, give me some skin, man. Right? Right. Give me some skin. Now, back in my day, that uh, back, back doing it old day, kicking it old style, <laughs> that had different connotation when you said, give me some skin. You really? say it today, circles? people tend to run. 1214 at 560 WQAM. We got a 1031 involving two ounces of marijuana. Our job, find them and kill them. Huh? It was a hot day in Alabama. My partner Josh and I just got in from the crack shop when a call came in. Squealing neighbors described the suspect as an elderly Jew with a glowing nose and a bad temper. They call him the Mo Man. Don't give me a hard time. But I can't swim. Now just float on your belly and breathe through your ass. Now shut up. There's something at the door. Yeah, what do you want? Mr. Moe, man. Who the hell are you? I'm George Rodriguez, and this is my partner, Josh. Huh? Mind if we come in and take a look around? Why, sure. Now well, you'll have to forgive the cheesy aroma. How's that? Well, you know, there's some houses they can smell a little uh, funky. Yes, sir. What? What are you looking at? I'm done. Now, see here. This here paint three tier many and fishnets. Don't make me giga gay. It's medicinal, see? I got carotenoid. Yes, sir. Hey, don't you get any funny ideas, bub. I'm sore, you know. No, sir, we have to Hey, determine. George, is this marijuana? I don't never think I've seen that before. Where's that coming from? I, 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 what are you doing in there, son? Arrest that man. He was going to rape me for filling in on his show. Not your idea of fun, mister. Well, I... Maybe your idea of fun is getting the mentally deficient high with a gateway drug and maybe raping them. Or maybe it's mugs like ah, you. Ah, shut up. Mm. Looks like I'm going to have to take a penalistic stance here. The whole man was sentenced to 30 days of being a cellmate to Bill Kamal and later begged to be shot. <laughs> you fairy. 20 past noon at 560 WQAM. This story I love. I absolutely love it. Nations where fewer people attend church tend to be more generous in their support for development in poor countries than those where church attendance is much greater. You're making According that up. The, I beg your pardon? You're making that up. No. According to the third annual edition of the Commitment to Development Index, the CDI, published this week in Foreign Policy magazine. 
The index, a joint project of Washington-based foreign policy and the Center for Global Development, found that Denmark, the Netherlands, Sweden, Australia, and Norway retained their top rankings among wealthy countries for their helpfulness to poor countries from last year. Italy, Ireland, Greece, and Japan were the least helpful of the 21 countries ranked by the index. The index noted that both the $12 billion in private and public aid pledged by wealthy countries and the citizens for victims of last December's devastating tsunami and the debt relief deal announced earlier this summer for some of the world's poorest countries contributed to improved performance by most donors. Nevertheless, the least church-going countries give more to charity and help people out. Denmark, the Netherlands, those heathen bastards in Amsterdam, Sweden, Australia, and Norway, those Weegians. Hmm. Oh, there's Pat Robertson. Pat saying Islam is anything but peaceful and characterizing activist judges as being more damaging to America than terrorists. Chavez has said that he believes the U.S. will assassinate him. The left-wing population... I say let's get Pat Robertson first before it's too late. Yeah, he's more dangerous than any terrorist. Hey, that's right. Him and all his religious nut jobs, man. And I'll give you an idea. What the hell did I do with it? Don't tell me I, I got off of it. I got off of it. Uh-oh. No, no, I just had a, uh, that MSNBC poll. It'll come up here. Here it is. It up. What's wrong with this woman's neck? Ooh, man. It's all purple and swollen. It's, it's, she, she must have got attacked by the purple people eater. Is that a big Adam's apple? That's a man, baby. Wow. Yeah, she could pass for a guy. You could, like, chop that hair real short. Mm -hmm. She's a lot more macho than that guy on that girl of Gotti. Oh, I don't want to look at her now. Oh, gee, what is that thing? I, I think that's pornographic. Oh, holy cow. What is that? It's like she's got a gigantic purple cube in her neck. It's a man, baby. No, that, that's a big purple cube. Anyway, that's the international anyway. So it all knows where she's really sitting because that's that Jim Clancy guy. I'm telling you, between noon and two, uh, noon and two CNN is like uh, cutting back on the budgets. That's why they're firing everybody. That's why you got that Sky Miles O'Brien on there like 24-7 along with that stupid Soledad bitch O'Brien. If Pat O'Brien was still alive, they'd probably stick his ass on there. Anyway. Well, when you see the result of this poll, this should tell you a lot you need to know about uh, what's going on in America right now. Uh, MSNBC, they've got 50,000 votes on their poll, a little bit more than we got. Oh, you're right about that, Nick. I can't stand it. Oh, for more than a year. It was a year ago this month. That is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. Did Pat Robertson go too far by calling for the assassination of Venezuela's President Hugo Chavez? That's the MSNBC poll. 50,000 okay. votes. Not sure 4%. Yes, 80%. 17% say, no. how do you like that? 17% say no. They like it. I say, let's kill them. How do you like that? Huh? All right, round them up. Yeah. Like Peter Marshall used to say on Hollywood Squares, turnabout is fair play. So turn around. But we will wait till October 1st. You do realize the good news? Since we have to spread the good news, that's what the Lord wants us to do. Spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus. Today's the 23rd of August. That means you've got 8 and 30, uh, 38 days. Almost enough to make me want to play 38 special. 38 days until October 1. Then, like if That's Greg right. Reed comes in and gives you like a dirty look and you think maybe he's going to fire your ass or say something silly, <laughs> just blow his crap away. That's all. Maddie Bell comes in me? there. Uh, Maddie Bell comes in there and starts, oh, George is talking about ass again. About just step on him, squash him, and then blow his crap away just to make sure. October 1st. So, so looking at that poll result, the fact that 17% uh, condone this kind of lunacy. Yeah. Well, it's only 17 Keep in mind that in Florida, the poll, it was, it was a favorable result. A, a sizable majority of the people in Florida in that poll agreed that it was a great idea. They like, maybe that's why they like their fat-ass governor. They like violence. So you get pissed off. Somebody taking your parking space. They look threatening to you. Somebody sticking their nose into your mail. Blow their crap away October 1st in Florida, baby. I don't think you even go to trial. They just say, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Slap down the wrist a little bit. Take away your purple star and gold jelly bean. Or is it the other way around? Remember we talked, uh, oh, there, there he is. All this anti-American feeling here. Chavez is still in Cuba. He has spent the whole weekend in Cuba promoting what he calls... You know what he said? He said, the hotel's here. That's what he said. <laughs> Sound just like Hyman Roth. That, that maybe, maybe that's why. Maybe they try to assassinate Hyman Roth. That's right. Well, that guy that we looked up last week on the, uh, whoever, whatever the guy's name oh, was. with the, Huh? <laughs> like I that you thought that. was Al Neary. Boy, you better start brushing up on your Godfather. Oh, it's been a while. When you're through watching those infomercials, you better start going back to Godfather Uno, man. Godfathers and Uno's, two of the fine pizza joints from the past in South Florida. Let's do that again, shall we? No. No, the last thing I need to do is start getting whipped up about food. No more food. Enough of the eating already, okay? No more. Because eating leads to two things, okay? Yeah. Fat uh -huh. and then excreting, neither of which are pleasant. See what I'm saying? Well, I don't think you can say that anymore. No, I mean, excretory activity. We can't, can't discuss any specific, but we can say, like, in general. Can't we, Joyce? No. Oh, sorry. 
Maybe that was Joyce on there with that purple neck. You think that was that, I, until you mentioned that, I probably wouldn't have noticed it. Oh. But then you start staring at it. She had a purple Phew. where her neck was supposed to be. <laughs> Man, I bet you uh, even Adams wasn't that purple on his neck either. Back in the Garden of Eden. See, everything comes back to Eden again. Uh, and ice probably. cream. And then when I come home next time, I'm sure that there'll be a lot of that cold uh, stone. What is it? Cold stone cream? Stone cold creamer. Oh, cold my. Cold stone. <laughs> what is stoned. it? It is awesome is what it is. Damn it. And it'll make you fat and give you high blood pressure and diabetes, which I already have both, and make you sick and get your blood sugar way up there and make you, like, die. But, oh, man, what a way to go. Well, I look forward to having Geldy on there again Thursday morning. Naturally, we want the humper back so I can rip his good buddy, uh, Jim, uh, what's his name, Martz. Sarny. Not Jim Martz. Sarney. Who the hell's Jim Martz? Sarny. Another One of the old Sun Sentinel columnist, Jim Martz. See how I got all these names? Been there? They're not necessarily in the right order, but I got them all back there in the recesses of my mind somewhere. See, I got like a peculiar form of Alzheimer's. In other words, I don't, I don't forget. It's just that what is in there is not necessarily, it's not where it's supposed to be. See what it. I'm saying? Need to go through the index files and straighten them out. 27 past noon at 560 WQM. Speaking of Alzheimer's, the mole man, do, 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 a man do, 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 a lot of people are trying to forget. He'll be here too, like it or not. And when you're shopping for shoes, comfort and fit are what it's all about, and of course price. And, and why does she keep putting this line? You know, you know what they do with this? This really just frosts my ass. They don't change the copy. You know what they do. They, mm -hmm. they put it in that word processor thing, and so it repeats, they, it repeats all the old stuff, including the stuff you don't want in there, and then they put in like a different, they change two words. I got news for you, honey. She, she is just absolutely the, the ultimate in disaster. Your good, close personal friend, right. Berkeley. Ultimate in disaster. Anyway, do the smart thing when your shoes start wearing out. Take good care of your feet, man, because when your feet go... I see all of these people like at Woodbine. they got the, the walkers. And they, they even have the walkers with little wheels on the bottom, you know, doing the little wheelies. Yeah, they got a handbrake on them, too. Yeah. Well, if you don't want to be walking like that, if you want your feet to be in good shape, get over to Brandy's for the most comfortable, perfect fit in your favorite style of shoes. Brandy's carries a humongous selection of just about every major brand, like Rockport, Florsheim, Echo, Mephisto, SAS, New Balance, all the other top names. And Brandy's professional shoe fitters will make sure you got a perfect customized fit of your favorite shoe. Just ask for Arnie. He'll make sure you get the perfect fit every time. And chances are they got the style in your size on a shelf ready to slap your feet on it. You can bet Maddie Bell's life on it right now. The pros at Brandy's understand fit and comfort. Brandy specializes in wide widths, too. Brandy's is well worth the trip from just about anywhere in town for comfort, style, fit, value, and selection. Brandy Shoes, 1290 North Federal Highway, Pompano Beach. Open daily till 9, Sundays till 5. And all this week at Brandy's, get Rockport Pro Walkers for forty two ninety, and Rockport World Tours only sixty nine ninety. Wide widths in most styles. So be sure to get into the store, visit them online, do your shoe shopping there at brandyshoes.com. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Did what any of us would do. He went on vacation. President Bush went on a month-long vacation. Damn the consequences. It is my style. It is hard work. It is hard work. It's hard work. My job is to do my job, you know. I'm going to do it the way I think is necessary. I'm going to set a vision. I will lead. And we'll just let the chips fall where they may. And best of all, I decide to quit. Dick Cheney can be president. It's hard work. Everybody knows it's hard work. It's, uh, and it's hard work. Uh, I know the human being and fish can coexist peacefully. Now get back to work. Thank you. <laughs> party, party. <laughs> I bet he likes that singing fish. Yep. The singing bass. He's probably got one in the uh, White House. Several, I imagine. Singing bastard. Anyway, what do we got on the poll? Our goal today on our poll for the audience, because it is the 23rd of August, getting back toward... Now, the kids are back in school, right? Oh, yeah. For quite some time now. Sure. 487. Our goal is 500. Our goal is 480, right? I thought it was. But we don't want to overdo it. Take a look at the schedule this week, man. We got all these ball games on, and we got uh, some marginal people on the air, and well, we always have some marginal people. Uh, what's the best product you ever bought from a TV infomercial? Never bought anything. 315, 64.4 percent. That number's going down. The infomercial people are starting to uh, make their voice heard. Ah. The Mean Lean Grilling Machine, 66. The Ronco Showtime Rotisserie, 16. Just said it and forget about it. Yeah, forget about it. Ultra Food Vacuum Sealer 13, Pocket Fisherman 13, just stick it in your pocket and squeeze it. The Ionic Breeze Air Purifier 12, the Flavor Wave Deluxe Oven 7. I, I, 
I just don't know what to say other than, uh... Oh, my God. Yeah. What does it take to convince you? I mean, like, they didn't send it to me for free. I'll guarantee you that. In fact, I bought four or five of them. Why don't you go to their house and demonstrate it for them, cook them yeah. up something? Yeah, your mama. Hey, listen, you you continue using your archaic uh, crap, and I'll use my flavor way. Uh, the Floby Haircutter 6, Dry Clean, uh, what is it? OxyClean 5. Anthony Robbins Motivational Tapes has got five. You go Anthony with that. The good. He looks like uh, he's out of this world, you know what? Doesn't he look like from another planet? Uh, if it's the guy I'm thinking of, he looks yeah, kind of like the guy with engine. the big head, the big tall guy with a oh, square yeah. jaw. In fact, his his whole ambiance, he kind of reminds me of that woman with the purple neck. <laughs> Maybe they came off the same ship. Ronco Knife Set 5, that's the one that Uncle uh, Shloimi's on. Moving Men 4, the Magic Bullet Blender 4, the Magic Bullet. The Jack Lane Juicer 4, he looks a little juiced, old Jack. Uh, Time Life Music Collection 3, the Ronco Food Dehydrator. Uh, how come we don't have Girls Gone? Oh, there we are. Ronco uh, Food Dehydrator 3, Girls Gone Wild's got a pair. Big one. Singing Bass has got two. The Ab Slide's got a pair. What about uh, Solo Sex Flex? What about it? That they do infomercials. All right, let's stick it on there. I know a couple of people that have one. The uh, Solo Flex. In fact, I used to have a big, oh, what the hell was his name? The guy that did the Solo Flex uh, spots? Scott Madsden. Oh, what that's right. You like that guy. Huh? I remember you used to talk about that. Oh, him. Scott on, Madsden. Huh? Wow. In fact, I used to have like a huge picture, and then the damn glass broke or something. I threw it out that somebody gave me of Scott Madsden. And every time I looked at that picture on the wall, I would ask myself, My God, is that thing real? Anyway, uh, Ab Slide 2, Ronco Vegematic 1, the Ronco Pasta Maker 1, the Walkfit, and the Thunderstick Pro, Pro Mixer have got the base. Oh, I hate it. Or maybe they just didn't buy it, huh? Pasta. Buy the products. Buy the products. They're now, good. we're not going to put Herbalife on there. Are they still in business? As far as I know. Remember the guy that died with the slick hair? Yep. Guy in his 30s, I believe. What the uh -huh. hell was his name? I don't know. Look up uh, Herbalife. Do a Google search. i got to know that guy's name. His name was Herb. No, it was not. Uh, Herbalife. Buy the product. Buy the product. That's all I used to say. They had, like, all these herbs and vitamins, and they were going to, like, uh, do all these, all these cures, you know. He was even better than the coral calcium guy and uh, Kevin Trudeau. Uh, buy the product. In fact, I think he died from, like, drugs, but not the kind uh, he was peddling. Other kinds. Speaking of being on drugs... Oh, London police mistook uh, Demenzis. Look at we this. want to tell you about a country that is literally in flames. Portuguese yeah, flames. officials reporting okay. two more people. You hear what he said? He said in Portugal they're all... Something like that. See, this is CNN International that they're sticking on there. They're trying to fool the public. I'm telling you right now, folks. CNN, uh, the, the people that uh, work there ought to be ashamed of themselves. And that so-called uh, expose you had on last night, the clock was the biggest piece of turd. It was uh, like a, a five-year-old child knows everything that was in there. There was no news. There was no expose. There was nothing. Here we've got a government that lies. We've got all these people dying, uh, not just Americans and Brits, but we've got all these Iraqis dying, based on lies, based on a crock of crap. Well, they shouldn't have attacked us. And that's the best they can do is put that swill on there last night? Please. I, I know you won't read it because anybody that's interested already read this, uh, looked at the stuff we got on there, mm -hmm. like uh, Bush's brain. I mean, they're, they're looking at that, uh, at that picture with Jesus on there. I like that. What is that thing? Oh, it's on the pierogi. There's Jesus on the pierogi, yeah. He looks like he's enjoying it, too. And then there's that the naked ass right underneath Jesus. He looks pretty uh, excited about that, too. But what's the, we got Bush's uh, brain, not Bush's brain. What's the thing called? The world according to Bush? Yeah. Is that still on there? Please don't tell me that that's gone. Well, oh, no, Eric. Please don't tell me that that thing moved or is gone or anything like that. I got all those stupid-ass cartoons on there. Where's the good stuff? Maybe it's not at the bottom. The world according to Bush. It's underneath that guy who's uh, feeling the change. The guy on his uh, bike. Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking about. No. He wants to be. He wants to uh, be a. He wants to be the mascot for the Yankees. The world according to Bush. You didn't look at that. You didn't look at the Downing Street memo. Uh, George Galloway. Huh? Yeah. All of that good stuff. Where's the one? On, uh, the power of nightmares. There it is. Right there. Right above that obnoxious dyke and Colder. State Department analyst warned the Clinton administration in July of 96 that Osama bin Laden's move to Afghanistan <coughs> would give him an even more dangerous haven he sought to expand radical Islam well beyond the Middle East, but the government chose not to deter the move, newly classified documents show. In what would prove a prescient warning, the State Department intelligence analyst said in the top secret assessment on Mr. Bin Laden that summer that his prolonged stay in Afghanistan, where hundreds of Arab Mujahideen received terrorist training and key extremist leaders often congregate, could prove more dangerous to U.S. interests in the long run than his three-year liaison in Khartoum. I'm not going to race him. 
<laughs> that he classified documents obtained by the conservative legal advocacy group Judicial Watch as part of a Freedom of Information Act request and provided to the New York Times, shed light on a murky and controversial chapter in bin Laden's history, his relocation from Sudan to Afghanistan, as the Clinton administration was striving to understand the threat he posed and explore ways of confronting him. Before 96, bin Laden was regarded far more as a financier of terrorism than a mastermind, but the State Department assessment, which came a year before he publicly urged Muslims to attack the U.S., indicated that officials suspected he was taking a more active role, including in the bombings in June 96 that killed 19 uh, American soldiers and at the Kobar Towers in uh, Duran, Saudi Arabia as well. Two years after the State Department's warning, along with Mr. Bin Laden firmly entrenched in Afghanistan and overseeing terrorist training and financing uh, operation, Al-Qaeda struck two American embassies in East Africa, leading to failed military attempts by the Clinton administration to capture or kill him in Afghanistan. Three years later, he struck a 9-11. Critics of the Clinton administration have accused it of ignoring the threat posed by Mr. Bin Laden in the mid-90s. They keep saying Mr. in the mid-90s while he was still in Sudan, and they point to claims by some Sudanese officials that they offered to turn him over to the Americans before ultimately expelling him in 1996 under international pressure, but Clinton administration diplomats have adamantly denied they received such an offer, and the 9-11 Commission concluded in one of its reports that it hadn't found any reliable evidence to support the Sudanese claim. The newly declassified documents don't directly address the question of whether Sudan ever offered to turn bin Laden over, but the documents go well beyond previous news and historical accounts in detailing the Clinton administration's active monitoring of bin Laden's movements and the realization that his move to Afghanistan could make him an even greater national security threat. Several former senior officials in the Clinton administration did not return phone calls seeking comment this week to the Times. Can't imagine why, can you? No, why? Maybe they got like a little uh, something on their puss? Something, something. Maybe they got like a, a purple neck. This is Neil Rogers. Cube. This is 560 QAM. Bitch. Absolutely. Have to pay. Gas prices go higher every day. I wish they would roll the prices back. I blame my wreck. My life's in disarray. Way too high. When I see the price, I start to cry. I pull up to the unleaded pump like some big chump because my tank is dry. It makes me sick Maybe I should buy a slate And go round like St. Nick Or go to the store and buy a stupid pogo stick What's the deal? I wish I could fit in a I'm dying over here. What a mess. It's the same at Exxon, Shell, and Hess. I feel like I have to rob a bank to fill my tank or send in SOS. Thank you so much, Mr. President, for those low, low gas prices. You know, Jim Clancy, I think maybe it's a, it's a benefit here that CNN International out there sticking this on for two hours every day. Remember how I told you in the past that when I'm in Europe and I watch CNN International, occasionally they'll have some scathing stories and they'll rip Bush in ass or they'll rip uh, you know the right wingers in ass right. and they'll tell it like it actually is. And Jim Clancy during that bit, he just ripped uh, Pat Roberts in a big bloody ass. It was great. Nice going, Jim. Oh! Just ripped him like crazy. And uh, even Bill Schneider has given the schneid. The Bush. Uh, and it is inflammatory because it only feeds uh, the critics of, of the United States in Latin America, uh, which has in many ways in Brazil, Venezuela, to some extent Argentina, tilted a bit to the left in recent years. Uh, it, it just feeds their sense that the United States uh, wants to uh, exercise a, a, a big stick diplomacy there, talking a prominent American talking about assassinating a foreign leader. Leader, that is actually very, very dangerous and inflammatory. All right. See, like I said, oh! uh, thank God for CNN International. Let's just take the domestic, like Wolf Blitzkrieg, and put them all on a uh, leaky boat. All right. 
to Venezuela. Yeah. Now, Jim Clancy pointed out, he said, Robertson over the years has always played on Americans' ignorance about what's happening in the world of foreign affairs and where countries are mm -hmm. and what's happening around them. And he's a absolutely... Absolutely correct. Sir. Nice going, Jim. Isn't he one of the Clancy brothers? <laughs> Five, six, seven. I mean, I'll take some more calls if we're going to get him here. We don't have any at the moment. And then we've got to wait for a delay of, uh, you know, like uh, ten minutes, whatever it is. I mean, I'll take some. We're not building any pool today. And I'm sure that you've been getting the intellectual calls when you're oh, on yeah. this week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. By the way, this scam, I mean, this great summer schedule that I love so much, ends on September 12th. I don't know if I ever told you this. I think maybe I probably did. The only reason that I'm doing Tuesday and Thursday during the summer, these last, uh, you know, forever and ever, yeah. you know what it is? Greg hates me? 9-11. Oh. See, back in November of 2001, just a couple months after 9-11, uh, is when, in fact, it was really early November, because I remember it was just before my birth, birthday and I was coming up here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Norma Kent and Greg were about a beep, but a boop, and they were, you remember that whole deal. It came right down to the last day, and he came waltzing in there at 1230 with a contract. You remember that crap. Uh -huh. And in a moment of stupidity, in a couple of weeks before that, while they were still negotiating this whole deal, uh, because of what happened with 9-11, remember we, they had us all terrified and the world was never going to be the same again. And like, yeah. like this was going to be an ongoing, there were going to be like terrorist attacks every week or, or whatever. Right. Kind of like what they made in Iraq. And so I said to Greg, I said, well, you know, I'll, I'll do Tuesdays and Thursdays because there's obviously going to be a lot of uh, stuff going on in the news. And, other, and, and so like a schmuck, I'm the one that did that. Hmm. I mean, it was going to be a done deal regardless. Is there any question about that? No. No. But when I said Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'll do that. I mean, that was like I volunteered that. Mighty wise. Which goes to show it. Huh? Although I don't mind. I mean, this, this is a fine schedule. Kind of, because this way, like, I kind of keep a, I keep my thumb on it. You know what I'm saying? Keep, mm -hmm. like, in touch a little bit. I don't want to be out of touch like Tom Jicka, who spends all of his spare time in L.A. getting wined and dined and shilling for all those uh, TV shows that are coming in the fall. I don't want to be like that. Let's talk about Le Tub in Hollywood. Oh! Just a joke. <laughs> So, so that's how that came about, this uh, Tuesday and Thursday crap. I think you it. learned something today. I'm sure the audience is going, <laughs> like that. No, they don't. They don't care. What's the best product you ever bought from a TV infomercial? We're asking on our poll today. We've only got 521 votes. MSNBC, they got 50,000. We got 500 lousy votes. How do you like that? That's the kind of, well, what do you expect? You know what I would like to do? I keep, think, I keep mulling this over. I wouldn't mind spending the money. What would you like to do? I've talked about it many times, and you like, uh, just ignore me. About taking out an ad in USA Today in some oh, nationwide yeah. publication, like, uh, I don't know, a quarter page, whatever. It might cost like four or five grand. I don't know what it costs. And, like, advertise our website. Yeah, I just ignore you. Why? Gordish Telson. You don't think that's a good idea? For wasting money, yeah, it's an excellent idea. I think it'll be an excellent waste of money. There's a word that comes to mind. You know what it is? <laughs> Boy. <laughs> yeah, Hard yeah that's one of them. Nice going, Geldy. Underachiever. Okay. Yeah. Well. In other words, you don't strive for. In other words, it's not about that. Remember the soap bar campaign. Be, if we want to be like the rest, like Greg and like his, remember his group of the big uh, ads that you raised money for, the soap bar campaign, and yeah. all that. Remember. No, but but, but I'm talking about getting more people to read the stuff and to, to like uh, they would listen online. Don't you understand? It's not going to make I us do. any more money. It would be nice if it had an effect. I just don't think it would. Now, the only thing it would have had an effect is if, you know, if the show would have gotten syndicated. Yeah, that would have then had an effect. We could have changed that last election, I guarantee it. I don't want to sound like an egomaniac, but I guarantee it. <clears throat> could have changed that last election. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, when yeah, you're dealing with a uh, uh, silly fairy, I mean, you know, what, what can I tell you? Lots, I'm sure. Yeah, I could probably tell you lots of stories. I don't know he says, uh, Brian Craig, it still wasn't all that good. That's what, I don't know what he <laughs> means by that, but he keeps saying that. A good cook, I'm sure. Yeah. Anyway, it's just, hey, look, I'm, I don't want any complications. Everything is just fine the way it is, and the checks keep showing up. By the way, Thursday's payday clearance. I just mentioned that for the third or fourth time just to try to make sure that it might arrive on time. In my life, I never worked for a company that just, uh, you know, their, their whole mentality. You know, it's, it's interesting. They don't want us to talk about A, B, C, and D, and don't mention this. And don't. But on the other hand, uh, when it comes to our money, it's like, well, well, you'll get it when we're good and ready, you know. I got my bonus money. You did? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty timely. It was fact, incredibly you, that timely. Was, pretty, was it early? Uh, no. Well, I mean, they still had some time, if that's what you mean. They had yeah. some slack. So it's wow. Awesome, yeah. Let's hear it. Oh. Holy cow, they're starting to treat George with a little bit of respect. Not much. Oh. A, little, oh. a little tiny bit. Maybe they like uh, the job you're doing on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I doubt it. That's funny. <laughs> Maybe Greg is calling up corporate and saying, you know, that George Rodriguez, he's going to be great <laughs> when Neil hangs it up in three years. Huh? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's put them on permanent. No, seriously, if if you're them, what are you thinking about? In other words, I, I got three three years and a couple of months, whatever it is, and then that's it. Sports, then back to sports. Get out of here, that's sports my like. ass. Well, I'm sure. Who are they going to put on? Stugatz Jr. Sure. They're going to put on uh, Lenny Martez with Jesse Al- Agler. Uh, no. They're going to put on uh, Sh- uh, Sig Listen, Shai Alivi. They'll do another national talent search like the one they did when they found Howard David. Oh, they're going to put on. That's an idea. Mo Middays. Do, 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 He's already got like two to four. Do, How about do, do, ten do, to four do, for the moment? Do, 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 do. Oh, three more years. I wouldn't I wouldn't plan that far ahead, Mo. Not not after hearing what Jody's got planned for you. Didn't he say he was going to put some kind of a Jewish curse on him? Yeah, he said he was going to, like, start rubbing his tits together and, like, uh, put a curse on them. Oh, man. He said he was going to, like, rip his mezuzah off his uh, condo door. Traces of bomb-grade uranium found two years ago in Iran came from contaminated Pakistani equipment and is not evidence of a clandestine nuclear weapons program. A group of U.S. government experts and other international scientists has determined. See, we just say this now before they start the uh, Iran invasion as if we have troops to go in there, which we don't. The biggest smoking gun that everyone was waving is now eliminated with these conclusions, said a senior senior uh, said a senior official uh, who discussed the still confidential findings on the condition of anonymity because he values his life. Scientists from the U.S., France, Japan, Britain, and Russia met in secret. You know those scientists, don't you? They're doing the work oh, of the yeah. hell. Satan. During the past nine months to pour over data collected by inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, according to U.S. and foreign officials, recently the group whose existence had not been previously reported definitively matched samples of the highly enriched uranium, a key ingredient for a nuclear weapon, with centrifuge equipment turned over by the government of Pakistan. Okay, that's the chigger in the woodpile. Okay, make no mistake about it. Iran has long contended that the uranium traces were the result of contaminated equipment brought uh, years ago from Pakistan, but the Bush administration had pointed to the material as evidence that Iran was making bomb-grade ingredients. Here comes that mushroom cloud again. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Well, it's just Scott Burrell. And when I'm up in Boca Tica slapping old women with painted lips around the pool, I listen to the Neil Rogers one to two hours. <laughs> I mean, I listen to the new Rogers there in balance one to two hours. <laughs> Baby, launch a couple missiles. Oh, 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 oh. Toward a place we know. Absolutely. And aim them at a fella whose first name begins with O. There's one thing we all understand. Al-Qaeda won't be finished. Till we blow up Pakistan All right. We could chase them around forever With our tanks and all our troops But special forces are so tired Of jumping through them hoops You know we need another plan So let's cut out all the nonsense and go blow up Pakistan. Now, Kata needs a nuclear tan. Why don't we stop pussyfoot and go blow up Pakistan? Absolutely. Boom Boom Jeffrey on Montreal Canadiens, number five, had a very ugly nose. The Reverend Graylin Scott Hagler writes, Pat Robertson is not a Christian. Who is the Reverend Scott Hagler? He's National President of Ministers for Racial, Social, Economic Justice and Senior Minister of the Plymouth Congregation of the United Church of Christ in Washington, D.C. Got it? I was just about to ask. Pat Robertson suggested this past Monday that President of Venezuela, Hugo Chavez, be assassinated by operators of the USA, though his comments are newsworthy because of his following in the 700 Club and his political stature and role in a political religious right. His comments, however, are out of sync with everything that's been handed down to us from the teachings of Jesus Christ. What I'm suggesting here is that Pat Robertson and individuals of his ilk are not practicing or preaching Christ, but have become adherents of a political movement in this nation that attempts to use Christianity toward their own narrow political ends. I believe that there is a role for Christianity in the events of the world, but the teachings of Christ lead us to love one another, strain and stretch to understand each other, and dare to know each other enough that we come to an understanding of one another, and from that create a world that is not built on might and winning, but on understanding and unity. Clearly, the comments of Robertson defy the framework we find in the Gospels of Jesus Christ. 
Some may argue that Christ existed in another time and didn't have an understanding of the kind of world we exist in today, but any follower of Jesus knows that he was human and he was also fully God, and therefore his understanding of the world, humankind, and our needs were not captive at a time that applies to all time. Knowing this, I don't see anywhere in the Gospels of Jesus that he condones, suggests, or advocates murder or political assassination. Instead, Jesus reminds us to beware of Pharisees and Robertson, Dobson, and others have become the Pharisees of our contemporary world. What do we find in the good news of Christ? We find love is expressed continually and unceasingly. The Gospels admonish us to do on, uh, unto others as you would have them do unto you. We find words in the Gospels that define the mission of Christians as the elevation of the poor, freedom for those who are oppressed, salvation for the lost, and hope for the hopeless. Jesus says, come unto me, all of you who are weak and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He doesn't say, come to me, those who are looking for political expediency, and I'll show you who and how to assassinate. Sure, there's been trouble in Venezuela, and some will suggest it's communism struggling to raise its head. Others will suggest that the poor Venezuela have been poor too long in a nation that's the fifth largest oil producer in the world. Thank God that doesn't happen in Saudi Arabia, by the way. Some will suggest that too much of the resources have been in the hands of too few, and that the poor of the land have found hope in a political leader, Hugo Chavez. I would not suggest that Chavez is a saint, for no person is perfect, but I do know that Chavez was elected, even while the greatest power in the world, the U.S., did everything possible to thwart his election. This is hardly the neighborliness that Jesus Christ calls us to emulate. I'm continually amazed at how so many preachers have ceased to preach Christ or to proclaim him out of the rich simplicity of his teachings and have resorted to a kind of theology that is not gospel-based, but is based on a narrow point of view that keeps the powerful powerful and the poor poor. Therefore, it's impossible to justify the comments of Pat Robertson. His comments are not of the gospel he claims to preach, nor the teachings of Christ that any Christian claims to love. Instead, what Robertson has to say is based on a paradigm for the most conservative voices in this country, and those voices have no God except themselves, and no soul, uh, no soul except their selfish point of view. Same Amen, brother. brother. About Jesus. What? Go tell it on the mountain. Okay. I'm going to go preach it right now. Got to preach my gospel like Howard Beale. Hey, there's Purple Neck. Oh, yeah, she's back. Purple Neck is back on CNN. Let's see. Looking on the listening on the web, finally got out of Miami. Or listening is what I think that's what they're trying to say. Listening. Look, it says listening. They're listening on the web. Finally got out of Miami. I don't care what George says. I'm loving life in Anderson, South Carolina. Oh my God! No wonder they're saying listening. One for the pool. Ginsu knives. All right. Got it. They got the old ginsu knife. knife. Yeah, keep them handy in South Carolina. You never know who your neighbors might be. Five six seven oh five sixty. I don't know why I'm giving the numbers out. Do I want to take a couple of calls? I got such a huge pile. WQAM, hello. Hey, Pally, how you doing? Okay. Hey, listen, uh, two things that I bought over the uh, TV, and I got a comment. I bought one of them both flex things, mm -hmm. and uh, one of them five masters for my uh, mom. They right. don't work so good. And uh, also, did, Neil, did you happen to catch us on Sentinel page two about the uh, two farmers in New Mexico that got sued by the illegal immigrants? Can you maybe no. like tell the uh, uh, did you read about that? No. Okay, uh, some sent it on page two. Two illegal immigrants uh, came over the border, uh, kind of like invaded this guy's land. He kind of held them hostage for an hour or so, gave them milk and cookies, took care of them, um, let them go, and supposedly the illegal immigrants sued him for uh, beating them. Uh, this guy, I think his name is Deeds, he's a lawyer in Atlanta. Yeah. The farmer, okay, uh, won the case, threw two of the farmers in jail, uh, and just basically gave this guy all the uh, money to the illegal immigrants. Isn't this great? Great country. Take care. You're America, baby. Zion America. Good luck to you. You'll need it. Milk and cookies. I mean, you know, what's wrong with that, right? Well, maybe it was sour milk. And they turn around and sued his ass. Well, he wanted to find out the American effing way right away, man. Go uh, sue his ass. And they, they did. That's a good start, right? Sure. Give him a couple of credit cards. Give him a social security card. And hold the beat up 57 Chevy and uh, turn him loose. Of course, you got to give them a couple of thousand bucks so they can afford to fill up with the gas. Right. Don't forget <laughs> Thank the ratings, you, Mr. Diary. President, for those bought $66 a barrel. Oh. All right. Now we're talking, man. Oh, speaking of propaganda, look at this. Chavez and Castro. Mm -hmm. But it's not just See? solidarity. Sure. Hospitals, schools, even tourist hotels like this one are full of Venezuelans here to undergo all types of medical treatment. In exchange, Cuba gets 90,000 barrels of Venezuelan oil a day at preferential prices. And Castro also gets something he lost with the collapse of the Soviet Union, an unconditional and rich ally. Under the Cubans' influence... Well, thank God the U.S. government didn't like push him in that direction, though, did they? No. No. Remember we talked uh, a few months ago about the DVD thing and about uh, my going out there and wasting that money on the DVD player with the, uh, for my uh, the HD? Right. Efforts to come up with a compromise on the next generation of DVD format appear to have stalled. That's the bad news. See, I saved it for last hour. Bad news. 
<clears throat> technology giant Toshiba and Sony have been in talks about bringing together rival DVD technologies, but the two are planning to go ahead with their own formats <clears throat> after talks on a single format failed, reports the Japanese daily Yomiuri newspaper. Toshiba with NEC and Sanyo is pushing HD DVD, while backers of Sony's Blu-ray include Dell and Samsung. Oh. Love my Samsung. Don't let me forget when the Humper comes back next week on Tuesday to ask him how he likes his Samsung HD TV that I talked him into. I already told you it was great. Yeah, that's right. The next generation of DVDs due to go on sale later this year. And in spite of what Gary Sarner says, hey, Gary, we're going to trafe your whole house. How do you like that, sweetheart? We're going to have, like, milkic and flashic. We're going to change the dishes all around. You're going to burn in hell, you lunatic. Oh, hey, Gary. You fairy. The next generation of DVDs due to go on sale later this year will be able to store much more data, including high-definition video. This offers incredible 3D-like quality pictures, which major Hollywood studios and games publishers are extremely keen to exploit. The clash between HD, DVD, and Blu-ray parallels the battle a generation ago that we all remember, many of us remember very, very badly, between VA. Well, I mean, it wasn't that big of a battle because, uh, you know, beta, who the hell had a beta, right? Suds. A generation ago between VH and Betamax, which resulted in the demise of Betamax, thank God. The groups back in the rival Next Generation DVD formats had been keen to avoid a repeat of the format wars of video, but negotiations between Toshiba and Sony on coming up with a hybrid DVD system have stalled, with Toshiba pressing ahead with production of HD DVDs. Oh, maybe you'll see about that on that underwear, that guy's underwear show you're watching. Maybe they're wearing uh, HD DVDs. <laughs> Toshiba is planning to launch our first HD DVD products by the end of this year. To do that, we have to start production of the software for by the end of this month, said a spokeswoman. However, neither side has closed the door on developing a single format. We haven't set a time limit for the talks, added the Toshiba spokeswoman. For its part, Sony said future negotiations will be held if there will be an opportunity for it. Sony plans to put a Blu-ray disc drive in its new PlayStation 3 game console next year. Blu-ray backers include Apple, Dell, Hewlett-Packard, Samsung, and Disney. HD DVD supporters include Paramount Pictures, Universal Pictures, and Warner Brothers Studios. Blu-ray disc can store 50 G high-quality data, while Toshiba HD DVDs can hold 30 GBs. How many? About 30, man. Both these formats offer much better quality audio and video, and could also mean there's a lot more space for interactive elements. Analysts say that new technology might be able to overcome the problem of different DVD formats, much like multi-region players can play DVDs from any part of the world. Well, all of this stuff. The bottom line is we're going to wind up having to spend more money, right? Oh, yeah, they have this. But, I mean, if you're going to spend a lot of money for an HDTV, at the very least, they should have uh, these. They, this, they should have this out already, shouldn't they? What are they dragging yeah, their feet should. about? Huh? I mean, I went out and spent all that money for that Samsung HD uh, uh, DVD player. Right. And to be very honest with you, you'd have to have uh, the sharpest eye in the history of the human race in order to be able to see any difference between, you know, there's, there's very little difference. Because you're still playing the same disc with limited uh, clarity. Right. right. Uh-oh, now, now not three more. Is this an addition yeah, to the four we well, already have? I don't know. Now, amid the violence. Violence kills three more Iraqi troops in Iraq. So now, uh, if, if that's an addition, because they had a blurb on about three hours ago. They need to timestamp these stories. Yeah, we need to know, is it seven? Is it four? Not, not that anybody's counting, you understand, because they're just, uh, you know, they're just numbers. They're not people anymore. Mm -hmm. They're just numbers on a sheet of paper somewhere. This is what is disgusting and grotesque. Here's a, a group of lunatics who talk about choosing life. And they've got so much blood on their hands that all the, uh, all the comic cleanser in the world ain't going to cleanse it. And here they got this lunatic right-wing preacher man who, who, you know, he and Bush have got a lot of in common because they both, they're both stupid and they both talk uh, to the ignoramus. They both have that appeal to the ignoramus element in America, which yeah, we discovered course. is like a little more than 50%. Mm -hmm. The, that crowd, scary. But don't forget, choose life until, of course, after we kill Hugo Chavez. 12 minutes after 1 at 560 WQM, if you're looking for a high-speed Internet service, you want one that's fast, reliable, easy to use. In short, you want the best one available anywhere. You want the number one high-speed Internet service provider in America. Comcast, high-speed Internet is what we're talking about. Its 100% pure broadband network blows away the competition with speed up to 15 times faster than DSL Lite. You can download music, photos, streaming video, online games faster than ever before. Simply put, Comcast High-Speed Internet gives you the very best Internet experience around. And with features like the fan, video email, security manager, and radio plus, it's more intense than ever before. And right now you can get yourself Comcast High-Speed Internet for just $9.95 a month for the first two months. So call 1-800-COMCAST and get the number one high-speed Internet service in the country today. Certain restrictions apply. Call for details toll-free. 1-800-COMCAST. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. 
How young is too young? It's the biggest movie of the year from the director of Dukes of Hazard. Do those legs come over easy? Jessica Simpson stars in. You better be reading my name tag. I noticed your initials were uh, double D. Boobs of Hazard. You're the one with the biggest boobs. I woke up this morning and I felt like like my boobs were big. They're dying this year, and your giant new boobs. They had a cake in the shape of my boobs. Thank God my boobs are like arms. My boobs are she big? Jessica Simpson in Boobs of Hazard. My boobs may need a hoist, but I can still bounce a quarter off my ass. 3D x-ray glasses for the first five rows. Rectum. It's uh, 118 at 560. Look how many votes we got. 555, man. Woo. Natural. We're 56 of the way to our goal today. Our goal is 666, isn't it? Okay, why not? I just made it up. We can do it. We got 42 minutes to get another 111 votes. That's uh, We can do it. 666, man. The Antichrist on the radio, baby. We're doing it. Speaking of the Antichrist. And minorities. Yeah, there he is. Hermann Gehring Rumsfeld. I got a great idea for it. Terrorist may pose as homeless for surveillance, the government says. This is on the... <laughs> <That story>. huh? <laughs> no, I'm not. I want you to listen to this. I'm listening. Asking for increased vigilance in the wake of the London bombings, the government is warning that terrorists may pose as vagrants to conduct surveillance of buildings and mass transit stations to plot future attacks. Vagrants. Mm-hmm. Homeless. Yeah. Told does you it conjure that. up any images of people standing out there on street corners? So, in other words, to protect ourselves, especially if October, after October 1st, if you're hassled by the homeless... Shoot them in the leg. There you go, yeah. And if you have bad aim, so be it. <laughs> yeah. Let me say it again. Shoot them in the leg. And I, I can't think of anything much more menacing than when you're sitting in the sanctity of your own automobile, right. spending 80 bucks for a gallon of gas, mm-hmm. and you're sitting there at the stoplight trying to be a good citizen, of, you know, sitting there waiting for the light to change so you can go, and here's some, some smarmy-looking creature comes uh, over to you, and, like, they, they look menacing. They look dangerous to me. Shoot them in the leg. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Starting October 1 in Florida. No questions asked. Then you're going to see a change in their altitude. You know what? Can't wait. In light of the recent London bombings, it's crucial that police, fire, and emergency medical personnel take notice of their surroundings and be aware of vagrants who seem out of place or unfamiliar. Shoot them in the leg. Said the message distributed by email to some federal employees in Washington by the U.S. Attorney's Office. It is based on the State Department report that was issued last week. The State Department had no media comment this week, but uh, they're mum for the moment because they're afraid that we might. Shoot them in the leg. The warning is similar to one issued by the FBI before July 4, 2004, that said that terrorists may attempt surveillance disguised as homeless people. Shoot them in the leg. Shoe shiners. Shoot them in the leg. Street vendors. Shoot them in the leg. Or street sweepers. Shoot them in the leg. The email stresses that there's no threat of attack that is intended to be informative, not alarming. Oh, my God. But nevertheless. Shoot them in the leg. <laughs> Homeless people easily blend into urban landscapes, the message said, so whatever you do... Shoot them in the leg. This is particularly true of our, of our mass transit systems where homeless people tend to loiter unnoticed. Oh, yeah. If you see somebody on the metro fail, homeless, loitering... That's right. You know what you do? Shoot them in the leg. It referred to a recent incident in Somerville, Mass., in which a police officer became suspicious about somebody dressed as a street person. The officer dressed as a street person. <laughs> what a line that is. Stop and think about that. How do you uh-huh. dress as a street person? Well, you see the people that work here, don't you? Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, dress like me. The officer quite... <laughs> yes, I do. The officer questioned the man, discovered he had a passport from a country of interest, <laughs> typically a Middle Eastern or South Asian nation, a country of interest, and a checkbook with a questionable address, the email said. The investigation is continuing, but just to be sure, they... Shoot them in the leg. Somerville police had no comment. Three British citizens were induct- indicted in the U.S. earlier this year on charges they conducted surveillance of the New York Stock Exchange, other East Coast financial institutions in 2000 and 2001. Well, I know what we're going to do with them. Shoot them in the leg. This, in fact, in the poor uh, uh, Brazilian guy in London, if they would have just shot him in the leg, he'd still be alive today. Discovery of the ele- See, the excuse they give is, well, you know, he's going to detonate that bomb, so we've got to get him before he... Uh, uh, Discovery of the alleged terrorist plan last year prompted the Homeland Security Department to raise the terror alert for targeted buildings located in New York, Washington, Newark, New Jersey. Security in those cities was all. In fact, if you ever go to Newark and you see anybody you don't recognize, shoot them in the leg. Right, just to be on the safe side. You ever been to Newark? Yeah, as a matter of fact. Oh, God, what a horrible place. If I ever had to go to Newark and saw some people, I would shoot them in the leg. Homeland Security was also also raised the terror alert for mass transit following the July 7th in bombings. The alert was lowered on August 12th. So everything's okay. Stand down. You know, stand down, but not too far because... Uh... Shoot them in the leg. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 
That is really something. The guests thought they were heading to an early afternoon wedding on a yacht dock near Atlantic City in the U.S. They ended up in jail instead, courtesy of an elaborate ruse by U.S. federal authorities hoping to bust up an international smuggling ring. When you hear this story, you're going to shake your I mean, the lengths that they go to, it's just amazing. Lengthy undercover investigations on opposite sides of the country resulted in indictments of 87 Asians and U.S. citizens on charges of smuggling counterfeit money, drugs, and cigarettes into the U.S., law enforcement officials said yesterday. Authorities said they seized $4.4 million in high-quality fake $100 bills. Well, I'll take some of those. They'd work real good in the slot machines in uh, Niagara Falls, New York, or maybe the ones that we're going to have in Florida. More than a billion dollars, no, more than a billion counterfeit cigarettes worth $42 million, and ecstasy, methamphetamine, and Viagra worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. And don't forget, crystal meth is destroying your neighborhood, whether you believe it or not. You notice that they're just in a frenzy about that lately. Yeah, that's the new one. Do you know anybody whose life has been destroyed by crystal meth? No. I know somebody whose life has been destroyed by crystal. Me too. Some of the cigarettes were made in China, acting, (laughs) acting assistant attorney general John Richter said. The money appeared to have been produced in North Korea, two officials said on condition of anonymity, because there are ongoing counterfeiting investigations involving similar phony currency. Agents also seized 700 grand in fake U.S. postage stamps and blue jeans worth several hundred thousand dollars, FBI Deputy Director John Pistoli said. Indictments were unsealed Sunday and Monday in L.A. and Newark, New Jersey. There's that smelly Newark again. Fifty-nine people were arrested during the weekend in 11 cities in Canada eh? and the U.S., including Baltimore, Chicago, Cincinnati, Vegas, L.A., New York, Newark, Philadelphia, and San Diego. Eight of those charged were arrested on their way to a fake wedding. Here, here comes the good part. Eight were arrested on their way to a fake wedding called for 2 p.m. Sunday off the Jersey coast. Operation Royal Charm was named for the yacht. The affair was seven months in the making, and the bride and groom were actually undercover FBI agents who worked with the accused smugglers for several years, said Christopher Christie, the U.S. attorney in New Jersey, no relation to Lou Christie, although he did mention that lightning struck these people twice. Invitations were sent out. A date was given. RSVPs were received from different points around the world, Christie said at a Justice Department news conference. One guest even bought a pair of gold presidential Rolex watches. New Jersey FBI special agent in charge Leslie G. Weiser, Jr., told reporters in Newark. They were assured transportation would be provided to the yacht. They were taken into custody instead. Surprise! Some of the men arrested Sunday appeared in U.S. District Court in Camden, New Jersey, on Monday in clothing that appeared uh, appropriate for a wedding. None of the counterfeit money or drugs made its way into circulation, but some cigarettes did. So next time you light up those faggots, you better watch out, okay? You better not pout, because they might be counterfeit. They might have those little worms crawling around in them. Agents posing as smugglers arranged to import the fake cash, cigarettes stamped with the Marlboro and Newport brands, and drugs in cargo containers that arrived in ports in Long Beach, Los Angeles, and Newark. The California operation in which the bulk of cigarettes were seized was dubbed Operation Smoking Dragon. How do you like that? Mm. The containers carried phony manifests identifying the goods inside as toys, rattan furniture, other items. Wow, sounds pretty rattan to me, I'll tell you. 26 after one. Speaking of rattan, of rotten... Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, we got the Molemeister at two, man. Nobody ever accused him of being rotten to the core, did they? Well, except Geldy this morning. He was good this morning, wasn't he? That was funny. Bop, 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 bop. He was a uh, nice going, Geldy. <laughs> yeah, we like Boy. him when he's in a better mood. Although he did make some caustic comments about uh, what a toilet that place was there. Well, he's always got that Panther gig to back him up. We got 570 votes. We got... Uh, we're never going to make it to 666. We need 96 in 34 minutes. That's three a minute. Are you kidding me? They need to start pouring in in chunks now. 574. Huh? Can we do it? We can do it. You see, leave it to me. See, you're one of those guys, like I said before, when I talked about putting that ad in USA Today. Ah, why waste the time? you like, you want to, you know, you just, you just want to like, slightly like you, because we've been working on that station too long. Just yeah. take your way through life. Take the easy way out. What's the point? You're right. Cornish Telfin. Yeah, good point. Although we do want to get to 666, or Josh is going to be really PO'd. 27 after 1 at 560 WQM for years. Armstrong Ford of Homestead has always treated everybody like family. They want to extend an offer to you to join their family right now. Ford nationally has extended their Ford family plan offer through September 6th. And right now at Armstrong Ford of Homestead, you'll get the same great pricing that every Ford Motor Company employee and their families get. Not only do you get employee family pricing, but you also get Armstrong Ford's exclusive tires and batteries for life program. And for a limited time with any new car purchase, you're going to get a color TV free. So what could you possibly be waiting for? Pick up the phone right now. Call our friend David Rich at 305-247-5112. He'll guarantee you that you won't get a better deal on a Ford any place. No bait and switch, no phony deals. This fantastic offer is waiting for you only at Armstrong Ford Homestead, where they always treat you like family. 
Armstrong Ford is proud to be locally owned and operated. Vice President and General Mangler David Rich says, Bring your family to meet our family at Armstrong Ford or Homestead, U.S. 1 at Southwest 307th Street, just 20 minutes south of the 836. You won't get a better deal on a Ford anyplace else in town, so check them on the web, armstrongcars.com, and then give David a call at 305 305- 247-5112 and ask him about the Ford family plan today. Drive a few miles extra and save yourself thousands at Armstrong Ford of Homestead. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Dumb as dirt. I guess we're in a bit of a quagmire's <laughs> He's a holy man. Holy. She's sexy and tan. Yeah, at least as far as I can tell through my cataracts. But their weedy rolls will cost him the most. <laughs> His love will their toes. I like toast. They can't chew it anymore. Rectum. Twenty-five till two. I don't know if we're going to make it. Five hundred ninety-two. We seem to be stalled out there. We're looking for six, six, six on a pull. Six hundred and sixty-six votes by two o'clock. Uh, I don't know if this audience is up to it. You know, I'll get out and push. Give it a big push, man. You got to push it. Five ninety-three. They're pouring in instead of chunks now. They're pouring in by the ones. Oh boy. We need let's see seven seventy-three votes in twenty-five minutes. That's a little under. That's uh, around three a minute, right? Right. Well, how, how how would we not be able to do that? Even if they're just voting, uh, they never bought anything from an infomercial. Huh? That's pretty. They, they don't even have to make a choice, right? Yeah. And then they can just lie a lot and vote two or three uh, other times for other stuff that they really liked a lot or hated. 593, I'm stuck on that. We're not going to do it. I'm going to go. I'm going to protest. I'm going to go on strike. Here's another one for the poll. The Q Grill. Bought one and it was great, it says, from uh, somebody. The Q Grill? The Q Dash Grill. I don't know what that is. The Q Grill. I don't know. Here's the latest. This is uh, just from the New York Times only minutes ago. Venezuela's vice president accused religious broadcaster Pat Robertson today of making terrorist statements by suggesting that American agents assassinate President Hugo Chavez. Vice President Jose Vicente Rangel said Venezuela was studying its legal options, adding that how Washington responds to Robertson's comments would put its anti-terrorism policy to the test. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see just what kind of spin the White House puts on this, right? Yeah. 
The ball is in the U.S. court after this criminal statement by a citizen of that country, Rangel told reporters. It's huge, hip it's huge hypocrisy to maintain this discourse against terrorism, and at the same time, in the heart of that country, there are entirely terrorist statements like those. When well, you're dealing with a terrorist uh, and a crook, remember yeah. his uh, illegal business dealings in Africa, Pat sure. Robertson? I mean, he's just, uh, you know, as crooked as, uh, as that uh, glib smile on his face. In fact, I put him and Kevin Trudeau. Let's, let's put him in the same cell. What do you say? Huh? Rectum. Kevin Trudeau and Pat Robertson. Are we going to get over 600? See, if we got over 600, I feel like we're going to make it. You know, if we get over the hump? The what? Oh, 606. Only the middle six is missing. Don't you hate that? It's like playing Wheel of Fortune and getting, like, Wheel of Fortune in the left wheel and uh, Wheel of Fortune in the right-hand wheel and a blank in the middle. Oh, man, I hate when that happens. Last week I'm playing and I get Wheel of Fortune, Wheel of Fortune, and the third wheel seems like it's going to take an hour to come up. You know what I mean? You hold your breath. Everybody's like, ah, blank. Fifty bucks. You know, the third wheel of Fortune is 166 grand. I mean, you yeah. might even be impressed by that. I, that would be uh, blank. Smitten. Blank. Michael Graham suspension by management ABC Radio's WMAL in Washington for recent on-air comments in which he characterized Islam as a terrorist organization has turned into a permanent furlough for the controversial midday talker. Won't see him no more. Bye-bye, Mike. This is Zion America, baby. The Council on American Islamic Relations have continued to denounce Graham's comments as hate-filled and have called for the talk host ouster ever since he made the comments on his program in late July. In a statement released by Graham regarding his firing, the talk host said, The First Amendment and I have been evicted from ABC Radio in Washington, D.C. It appears that ABC Radio has caved into an organization that condemns talk radio hosts like me, but has never condemned Hamas, Hezbollah, and won't, wouldn't specifically condemn Al-Qaeda for three months after 9-11. As a fan of talk radio, I find it absolutely outrageous that pressure from a special interest group like CAIR, CARE, can result in the abandonment of free speech and open discourse on a talk radio show, he said. Asked to comment on Graham's accusations, WMAL President and General Mangler Chris Berry said, Typically, we don't comment on personnel matters, but given the misstatements being communicated, I want to set the record straight, eh? Some of Michael's statements about Islam went over the line, and this isn't the first time he's been reprimanded for insensitive language and comments. Well, it's a good thing he well, wasn't working at QM. He'd gotten suspended, at least, instead of fired. I asked Michael for an on-the-air acknowledgement that some of his remarks were overly broad. Inexplicably, he refused. Michael has also tried to position us by saying that we were pressured into taking disciplinary action against him. For the record, we make our decisions independent of external pressures or third parties. We will not permit an employee to willfully violate our policies or disregard management direction. He must know Joyce, you know what? So Michael Graham got joiced. Barry also noted that although WMAL PD Randall Bloomquist was out of the station this week on a long time vacation, he was in the loop on the decision to terminate Graham. You're fired at it, Mike. You're fired at it, okay? You got the schmata heads all bent out of shape, and you're fired at it. You're out. Investigation to death of PFC Patrick Tillman in Afghanistan. Does this indicate at all that the initial investigation was caused as his parents claimed? I was not aware of that. <laughs> Oh, man, you're a Secretary of Defense in action, baby. Wow, is, is that incredible or what? It's very credible. Yeah. Liar. Hermann Goering would be proud, sweetheart. This Nazi. is Neil Rogers. Fascist. This is 560 AM. You know, during the break, we had, like, uh, vote, votes were pouring in by the ones. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to, like, fall just a handful short. There's nothing. Wrong. And guess what I'm doing right right now? Speaking of the uh, what are you doing right now? And the uh, I'm uh, heating up a great uh, weenie for lunch. In my no comment. I am in my fl flavor wave uh, deluxe oven. All I'm right. Cooking up a bratwurst, baby. Six twenty nine. If this audience doesn't come through for us, we're finished. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we'll just stay on until it turns over. Exactly. We'll stay until midnight. Oh God. And then the Lord said, "Let there be light." And lo, there was light. From the same people who brought you the much-beloved Talking Bible comes a new ten-volume set, brilliantly updated for the 80s. Yes, it's the Rapping Bible. There was dark everywhere. Then the man said, light. and the light was there. He said, I've done good, there's no doubt. On the seventh day, he just chilled out. Genesis, Genesis, beginning of that, beginning of this. Finally, the good book is Genesis. bad, and his word is not there. Check it out. There's a channel called Sodom and Gomorrah. Everybody bodied like no tomorrow. God looked down, 
said, now my fault. Don't look back or you turn to stop. Watch white took a peek. Started to freeze. The cow came up and licked her cheek. Take a lick, y'all. Up a cheek, y'all. Imagine all the songs, all the parables, every sacred biblical word interpreted by the finest sucker MCs of all time. Genesis! Exodus! <laughs> Rapping Bible, making his word fresh again. See, this is what happens when you put pressure on yourself. You're right. Take the easy way out and quit, uh, you know, making up uh, stuff that you can't accomplish. 632. Oh, can huh? We can do this. We need 34 more in, in 14 minutes. Are you crazy? Yeah, well, a little bit. Look at that. 637. We need 29 votes for 666. I mean, what a what a phenomenal accomplishment that would be. Remember early in the show, I was saying our goal today is for like 250. 200. Well, whatever. Our, our goal today is for like five votes because we realize it's the dog days, and plus you people don't give a crap anyway. You're not highly motivated. If teens had their choice of a car, they'd take a Ford Mustang, according to a recent poll, but parents want to uh, put the Mustang at the bottom of the list of cars they want for their kids. Yeah. Oh, man, that bratwurst smells good already. Mm. And see, the good part of that is in that flavor wave that I mm. said it for like, uh, I said it and I walked away. And then even, like, even let's say I put it on about 20 up for 60 minutes, so about four minutes till two, it's going to be done, but it'll keep that little heat uh, thing, you know, keep heating it. Yeah. An online poll administered by the vehicle pricing company, Kelly Blue Book, showed that drivers aged 60 to 25 ranked stylish vehicles, such as a Mustang or Jeep Wrangler, as their top vehicle choices, while their parents preferred something more sensible, like a Toyota Corolla. No comment. My mother had a little Corolla that I bought her, mm-hmm. and that was perfect for her. Of course, she was nine years old. Good mileage. The 2000 Honda, especially when she drove it, the 2000 Honda Civic ranked highly with both parents and teens. It was top choice for parents, third choice for teens. The 2001 Mustang and the 2002 Corolla were the most polarizing cars. The Mustang was the favorite for teen drivers, but ranked dead last as the car parents who want to see their kids drive. What about a 2005 Vet? Too steep. The Corolla was the car teens least wanted to drive, but it ranked second among parents. Young drivers, who often are very image uh, image conscious, prefer the sporty, cool cars. But parents seem more concerned with safety and practicality when it comes to having their children behind the wheel, said Jack R. Nerad, executive market analyst for the Blue Book. The online poll, which was conducted at Blue Book's website, asked young drivers to rank eight used cars they would prefer to drive. Used cars? What kind of schleppers? While parents were asked which of those same vehicles they'd pick for their kids. The poll had respondents choose from a list of used vehicles priced at about ten grand. Overall, 399 parents and 509 young drivers took the poll. Only in market, in market used car shoppers were surveyed, said Robert Eckert, a spokesman for the Blue Book. The survey had an estimated two to three point margin of error. Top choice among kids was the 2001 Ford Mustang, getting 27% of the kids' votes, followed by the 2000 Jeep Wrangler and the 2000 Honda Civic. The 2000 Volkswagen Jetta and the 2000 Acura Integra ranked fourth and fifth, while the 2000 Ford Explorer and 2000 Toyota Tacoma took sixth and seventh. The 2002 Toyota Corolla was ranked last, getting only 3% of the votes among young drivers. See, that's why parents and their kids hate each other. Parents, on the other hand, ranked in the, the 2000 Honda Civic as the first choice for their kids, earning top choice among 23% of the parents. The 2002 Toyota Corolla and 2000 Toyota Tacoma followed as the second and third most popular choice by the, choices by the parents, while the 2000 Acura Integra and 2000 Explorer took fourth and fifth. How do you like that? Okay. I'm not going to make any comment about Mustang for obvious reasons. You know, I prefer Corvettes. And you know what sound I make when some punk pulls up alongside me in their Mustang and their real hot shot Mustang, and I'm sitting there in my 2000 Corvette at the stoplight, and they're racing the engine and looking at me. You know what I do? I go just like that. And I look in the rearview mirror and chuckle a little bit. 656. We got it made in the shade, baby. Oh, oh I told you. You were all bent out of shape about it. No problem. Didn't I say that? That's right. Just relax. No pressure whatsoever. I can't. I can't. Uh... Oh, I know. Is it under Samson? See, this is the problem. And, of course, you're guilty of this yourself. Yeah. Putting stuff in there, and then you can't find it. We did it! See, there you go. If I could just we did it! find that. We did we can it! play that up until 2 o'clock. That Rumsfeld, that response on Pat Tillman and his parents' comment, that was so just unacceptable is what it was. Not to mention unbelievable. Ridiculous. You know, he don't know nothing. He don't hear nothing. To see no evil, hear no evil, you know. How can these people still be in office? I don't know. I mean, we're living, we're watching, we're seeing yeah. this. It's happening right in front of our eyes. Some of us live through uh, Monica Gate, and we live through Watergate. And, and, and this is going on now, and these people are still in power? They have vays. They have vays in the Democratic Party, man. Is, is, talk about weak sisters. Even the sisters of the poor and blind would be embarrassed by their weakness. My God. Give me a breath. 669. Oh, oh my God. 
Did this audience come through a little bit more? We'd like to have ended right at 666. See, see I can always find something to bitch about. Mm -hmm. No, that's good. In fact, you know something? I'm thinking the goal was 700, wasn't it? Isn't that what Josh Cordes said? <laughs> what? Always keep it. pushing, baby, pushing it. Uh, see, you're just, you know, see that you're you're a beaten man. That's right. Between your wife and that station, man, yeah. you're a beaten man. Why don't you just admit it? Uh, I wasn't denying it. I never they have it. beaten you into mm -hmm. submission. My life's over. <laughs> well, and I'm supposed to be the doddering old fool, and I'm having one whale of a good time. You're not married, are you? No, thank God. Yeah, see. Although uh, in Toronto, you know. <laughs> this is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Neil? God? I got a dry, flicky air. Seriously, when I scratch my thick, black ass hair, big, fluffy flakes come pouring off my ass. Looks like it's snowing. I mean, you know, I got a dandruff problem. Like on my scalp, only I got it on my ass, too. So I'm thinking, what if I get some action with a broad I meet, right? And maybe she gets all pukey on me on account of I got ass flakes, right? So I asked my pharmacist, and he recommends new ass and shoulder shampoo. He told me to get rid of tough skin diseases like seborrhea, psoriasis, and some other one I forget right now. Anyway, I've been using new ass and shoulders, and it really works well to curb that flaky, itchy burning on my big, fat ass. And on my head, too. So get ass and shoulders, and who knows, maybe you'll get some ass. Hey, that's good. I just made that up. I should be an advertiser. New ass and shoulder shampoo. Who knows? Maybe you'll get some ass. You're only interested. Rectum. 157. Okay, now we could have gotten the 700 votes, but uh, we don't want to show off, okay? Plus, right. George would be depressed because he's like, he's looking at life from a different point of view, from like the defeatist point of view. From the bottom. Right, from the bottom looking up. So it can only get better. 680 votes. The best product you ever bought from a TV infomercial. Never bought anything. 414, 60.9%. Probably smart. Although, I'll tell you one thing, that flavor wave sure is great. Don't buy it, though, because you probably uh, might enjoy it, and that's bad in Florida. Yeah, we don't want that. We don't want anything that you might like might be good. Did you hear that? I, I heard a beeping. You hear it? That's my bratwurst, man. Is that great or what? Totally. And now it's just going to sit there and it'll say, well, what does it say on that thing uh, when it goes off? Oh, I don't know. I don't use it. You don't use it? I have people that do that. I see. But you never, just out of curiosity, never took a look at it. In other words, it's still well, heating. It. Yeah. It's still heating. It says it's got a little, like, uh, just relax. It says, uh, just Coaster. walk away. The lean, mean, the mean, lean uh, grilling machine, George Foreman's thing, 82, which is just fine. It's great, but it's passe. Even you would agree with that, right? Right. I mean, try to try to roast a turkey or a chicken or no. uh, a pot roast in the lean mean grilling machine. You better have like some strong hands to squeeze that thing, baby, right. in the roast too. Especially if you're cooking for a family. Ronco Showtime Rotisserie 23. Set it and forget it. In fact, just forget it. Period. Because this uh, deal we got is much better. Girls Gone Wild 18. Ultra Food Vacuum Sealer 15. Ionic Breeze Air Purifier 15. Oh yeah, the airs are when you finish with that. The Pocket Fisherman 15. OxyClean 14. The Time Life Music Collection 12. Perry Como and Wayne Newton and Loretta Lynn. Would you say Lynn Anderson? Right. The Flavor Wave Deluxe Oven's got 10. Boy, I tell you, it, uh, that's fine. Like I said, I'm not, I, I'm not peddling it. I'm not making a dime from it. I spent plenty of money on it. It's great. The Singing Bass, 9. Oh, my favorite fish. Ronco Knife Set, 8. Anthony Robbins Motivational Tape, 7. The Floby Haircutter, 7. Moving Men, 6. The Magic Bullet Blender, 6. The Jack LaLanne Juicer, 4. Jack is just two years older than Mo, by the way. Ginsu Knives, three. The Ronco Food Dehydrator, three. Solo Flex, two. The Ronco Vegematics got a pair. The Ab Slide, two. The Ronco Pasta Makers got two. George's got one if you want it cheap. The Q Grill, the Walkfit, and the Thunderstick Pro Mixer, they all got the big O. Oh. Bye, bye, bye.